titties. Come on. Oh my God. What's happening? Here I am. What are you doing? Once again. Up jumps the world. Oh, okay. Watch my flow. Right. Here I go. It's the return of the Mac, baby. Oh, uh-huh. very good. Yeah, you get it. It's a double return entendre. Of, return of the Max. Yeah, because not, only, good, cause not only is that the song, but we're also back. Uh-huh. That's, why, that's why it's funny. And we're Max, last time I heard. What is a Mac? Don't know. Sounds good, though. Yeah, isn't it? That's like what Americans used to say if, if you're like kissing someone. Like, I was macking. I was macking I that Mac, girl. Isn't it like a. It's American it's been pie replaced chat. by the word pimp in the 90s. Yeah, oh, I'm really? a Mac. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I, think, I think in the 90s. I was macking on this girl. I think 80s was macking, <laughs> 90s was, was <laughs> pimping. on this girl. And I don't know what it is now. Yeah, I feel like it's in the 2000s, it now. took a different meaning. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But without further ado, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Good and terribly. Episode 21. Oh, very good, yes. Swear down. Yeah, yeah. That's I just do this shit off the dome. Yeah, come on. Just off the dome. Musical mod. On the spot. That's that's the value that I bring. Bars on tap. What are you man saying? What are you man saying? We are back. We are back. Episode 21, we took a break. Welcome back, everybody, to This Good and Terribly, mm-hmm. the best podcast on the planet. That's right. That's right. Just going to let that dwell. Just let it hang. Mm. Marinade. Prove yes. me wrong. Prove me wrong. Mm. Here with the mandem, Johnny Vivaz, Hello. man like Tommy, and it is I, Abiyade, the three of us, we are here. We are back again. Finally. Fortnightly again. Took a little break. Man had to get a tan. But here I am, blacker than ever. Blacker than I am. Now I'm in. Darker the berry. Sweeter the juice, mm. baby. I can't relate. You soon be able to relate. You're going off on a little I am. gallivant. I am. I'm coming back. Nice Once we finish brown. recording, basically, you're I'm, off on the old, on the old PJ. I am. Eh? I'm going to get on that plane, and when I come back, I'm going to do that really bad thing that white people do, and I'm going to put my arm right next to Tommy's and say, "Oh, look, I'm almost as dark as you." Mm. Why do you? Why do Caucasian people do that though? That that WBS. Very, yeah. Yeah. It's internalized shame. I it's think. never true though. It, no, it's like, never we true. can see that. Yeah, yeah no, you're not ne- darker than us. It's demonstrably embarrassing. So it's not true, nor is it banter. And the thing is that most most of the gringos just go red. They don't. They're not really brown either, right? Yeah. It's just like a. It's just a small Samoan rouge, and so like yeah, yeah, they're invariably yeah. standing next to a black friend who doesn't want to hear it, and they're nowhere near as dark. But anyway, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be comparing my Latino skin. Why don't to Asian Thomas. people get that? Get what? Go red. Why, why would you not compare your your complexion to yeah. a brother from from Sri Lanka? A true, Tamil, true, true, a true. Oh, it's a very true. important question. A why Tamil do you come guy. for us? Uh, why are you man, always I, coming I for us? I think you probably would compare. You would compare to 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 someone from, to, sa- to from South, South Asia. Asia. Yeah, yeah. I think oh, yeah. so. I think like if you was like comparing yourself to a Japanese person, that's maybe less attractive. That's that's like. What do you mean attractive? Well, it's like winning the UEFA Cup if I'm more tanned than a Japanese guy. But like mm. if Tottenham I'm as never. tanned as mm. someone else. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm as tanned as a black guy, that's Champions League chat. That's mm. that's big tan game. I'm um, glad to know that we are finally aspirational. But before, yes. Moving but before on, you get to finally Champions useful League to thing us anyway, as I'd a say that we'd of... start off with a championship thing. But that was also a good banner. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No, but before we do that, man, we've not been around. I ain't seen you, man, in a bit. You know what I mean? I want to see how you guys are doing. We've kind of figured out what Johnny's on. But how are <laughs> you, bruv? Tommy's in the house. I am very well. Back again. Back again. Isn't that what he says? Love, bruv. All good. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. good. It's been actually the best uh, three weeks of my life. What's what? That? Minimal interaction with Johnny Vivas. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. For many reasons. That NHS yes. app pinging off has been working wonders for yes. my blood pressure. <laughs> Johnny's been getting... Pinging off. Johnny's bro. been going through it, In bro. the trenches, bro. <laughs> He's been going through it. In the trenches. So it's been good. It's been good. Did the uh, best man thing at a wedding. Come mm. on. Uh, two, two drinks here and there. Come Enjoying on. the sun where we can. Mm. Rooftops and that. Yes. So it's been good. It's been good. Settings. Johnny. COVID. Boy. What's been going on? How long have I got? Or as long as I can talk for? So Rich went away on holiday. I would, let me just pre, pre, Mm. uh, preface this uh, preamble by, uh, by just saying it's worth listening back and understanding Johnny's attitudes towards vaccination. (laughs) Pre the story. Can I set the scene actually? Yes, please. Johnny Mm. was invited to take Mm -hmm. his vaccine Mm -hmm. for the thirties and under. Mm -hmm. Johnny, Mm Booked himself in for his vaccination. Correct. Wrong again, Bob. G- got his date <laughs> and was excited Correct. for helping the nation get through this Panny D. Yeah. Panny D is my new one, by the that, way. That's shocking. Please move on. Panny D. I don't recognize this story, by the way, but please carry on. <laughs> he then 
realized that vaccination date fell on the same day as his beloved England mm, challenge. playing Continue. in the second round. I think it was at that stage. It was the second group stage game against Scotland. Scotland. Oh, yeah. My bad. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So he decided to put off yeah, I did. the vaccination, cancelling it or no showing, I think is more accurately. Mm-mm. And then <laughs> waited two weeks. Yeah. Before rebooking it. Yeah. And then realized, oh, this too clashes with the second round game against Ukraine. Yeah. Am I on the right? Yeah, no, that happened. Yeah. We Finally it. gets mm. himself on the doctor's chair to get the jab. Yeah. Goes home, happy with himself. No, even no, uploads, no, 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 even no. uploads a picture no, no, on you IG. Missed, you missed one. You missed one. Uh-oh. You missed one where, where he, uh, he had an appointment. He walked in. And then his bougie ass said, I ain't getting on Moderna shot. Oh, yes. And then walked out. That, that was happened. on the front. Yeah, that was when you actually got there. You were like, I'm not doing. I don't want no Moderna. That's, that's before we recorded this last yeah, episode. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he walked out of that. Yeah. Refusing to take a Moderna shot. Yeah. Bougie bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Fast forward to actually sitting in so the I've doctor's chair it. and getting the vaccine. Yeah. What happened two days later, Johnny? Take it away. Well, boy, so 6th of July, I've gone to get my jab in the arm. Pfizer gold standard and finally got what I was looking for. Turns out I was probably already positive with COVID when I got the vaccine. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. And uh, I got the, um, got the double bubble. But got it's the, Johnny, so. The super severe reaction. We, oh, we're doing anti-Semitism this week, are we, Richard? I mean, um, again. Again. Uh, got the super severe reaction that you get when you get the vaccine and you're positive and they tell you so if, you, if you've got COVID don't get your jab for a month that's the advice uh, I did not uh, follow that um, not only did I not follow it I kind of egregiously went against it by accidentally getting mm. jabbed while positive and was severely ill for about 10 days so when I say severely ill um, I mean I, I, my fever was so high I was hallucinating what were you hallucinating? so I had such a bad headache uh, I woke up drenched in sweat, convinced that someone was trying to microchip my brain. Mm, so m- my fever was so high uh, and I was so rattled that for about three hours, I was like coming up with a scenario to stop this company microchipping my brain because that's how bad the migraine was. So Good. how are you now? So boy, so 10 days of basically sweating through bed sheets and not being able to breathe, low oxygen levels, just about survive without having to go to hospital. And now I am at the point where I just can't fucking taste anything, which is very jarring. Still, Yeah, I can't taste anything. That'll go on for weeks, which is fine because I can go to Tesco's and just buy the value range instead of the good stuff now. True. Makes no difference. Yep. Um, but I like, I like the use of the word now in there. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm certainly a finest man. Mm. Let's yeah. taste the difference in that. Yeah, yeah come on. Wait, okay. trolls family. Yeah, yeah. Percy pigs. Mm. Um, but now I'm basically at the point where I can't talk for too long because I get out of breath. And I definitely can't do Lord. any kind of exercise. I'm not going to lie. Like, we thank the Lord. Minimal vocals from Johnny <laughs> is uh, an experience mm. we should feel at least once or twice in life. Of course. I of mean, course. God willing, by the next episode, I'm back to full lung capacity. And it'll be at that point when I turn your microphone on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Mutes, um, baby. But yeah, I'm, I'll be murked. I'm not going to lie, I'll be murked. Um, shout out my brother, Big Bro Dave who's had long COVID for a year. Um, we've got family susceptibility to this shit, which is why I was trying to avoid it the entire time. So is that a thing, susceptibility, susceptibility to, to this? Well, to clearly, long COVID. some people have more severe reactions than others. But what I will say is that my mum, my brother and me have all suffered from pneumonia at different times. Shoot. And COVID is effectively a, a form of viral pneumonia, which is what Shoot. I had in 2019. I knew it was going to be grim. I tried to avoid it, got hit. Uh, so now it's gonna. I'm. I'm basically. Hopefully, this isn't long COVID, but I'm in the. Lo- I'm in the throes of post COVID recovery. But long COVID didn't stop you from going up north to see your family, finally see your mama mm-hmm. after a while. Happy birthday, auntie! Mm-hmm. Um, and taking, <laughs> if you haven't seen Johnny's Instagram, some of the most <laughs> hilarious family photos. Mm. Um, oh, that's, that's the, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pull them okay, up for you please. to oh, see. He he, he he tried to front run the joke by I saying did. I was taking some Tory photos, but yeah. boy oh boy was he on the money. Yeah, they were some real fucking Tory family. But yeah. okay, like, very like, good. Vote for your local MP, it's very Johnny Dave. V yeah. type shit. Let me pull this stuff up because yeah. it deserves all of it's your attention, of, Johnny. It's kind of like junior minister in 
the Department for yeah, Transport. Don't, vibe. don't don't watch the caption. Just just look the picture. House of the Sticks. My neighbors are voting Tory. Yeah, surely. Yeah, look, look, look. Yeah, look. Jeez, yeah I don't even great. know which one of you guys yeah. are running. You see how they're leaning. Could be anyone. <laughs> yeah. Anyone. Any. Yeah. Any. All four of you could yeah. be running. You see how they're leaning. <laughs> Say so basically, Ruben's the only one I know that's not running. <laughs> yeah. You see how they're leaning on the barn door. Yeah. No. No. I, so we I like the greenery to behind it. Well. Photographer told us to do that. No. No. No doubt. I, I had to I wear a shirt on a Sunday. Do you know how? Anyway. I like the way you're sat on onto the on the fence. Honestly, not since. I went to church in Upper Clapton Road and auntie forced me to turn up in nice dress Shit. to witness an exorcism. Have I worn a shirt on a Sunday? I also Swear like out. the fact that the, uh, the spades are near you to show that you're relatable. Yeah. yeah. Do so your is, own work. This is definitely yeah, the white side of the family. Venezuelans don't do this All shit. we need to make this like a completely perfect... Oh, I was going to say all we need is for him to do the, the rolling up of the sleeves. Oh, it's there. It's, oh, yeah. there. it's, it's there. all it's there. there. You've ro- you really rolled up. That. You yeah. really rolled up your sleeves to I, show I thought, you are working class mm, and of the people and of the people. Uh, in for a penny, in for a tax avoiding pound. So I thought I'd roll up the sleeves and let's get Tory, baby. But yeah, big up to everybody who's been waiting for this episode. You mm-hmm. haven't been waiting too long, let's be honest. Um, we we missed you as much as you missed us. Coming at us, though. I got You, you might get told uh, off. I got told off in the DMs for, for the audacity of, course. of taking two weeks off. Of course, People we, have been waiting for us. Distance and the heart. And you know what? I was rattled. Like, what was it? Two Fridays ago when we weren't recording? Yeah. I was like... What do I do with myself? Well, we've been at this for nine months. I was... I was so rattled. I wasn't rattled. I was on a pool. On a pool? In a pool. <laughs> by a pool. pool. I was, just I was walking literally walking water. on a pool. Um, <laughs> not thinking about it too much. That's what you call the holiday vibes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm joking. Yeah. We were thinking about it a lot. We were having mad fucking strategic talks we're about how to push the, the, the podcast forward, forward while I was like, lads, I'm literally trying to fucking get my <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> Can you allow me? Me and Tommy were like, that sounds Tommy's like, like render the fucking <laughs> clips. <laughs> render the videos for YouTube. I was like, all right, bro, fuck you. Yeah, no, but That's I did it on a Sunday as well. I was hot. Sounds like Dedication. Yeah, 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 yeah. But... Obviously, with a two-week break, or I guess it was like a month in the end, between episodes, there were quite a few things that we missed. England lost the Euros and then lost their shit. Mm -hmm. The government continues to say, fuck you to your rights by proposing whistleblowing laws that Mm -hmm. will make the Ed Snowdens and Julian Assanges of the world liable to get the legal equivalent of a shanking in the toilet. More on that later. Dominic Cummins, white boy summer representative, Mm -hmm. continued his own whistleblowing, revealing that Boris Johnson claimed that if they're 80 and above and get COVID, shit, people die every day, B. It's a sticky sticky one still. (laughs) Let them die. The president of Haiti, Jovenel Moisa, got murdered. Oh, boy. By what appears to be Colombian mercenaries in Mm. collaboration with his own security team. (laughs) I mean, before we move on, (laughs) before we move on, can we talk about that? A president has been killed again. Yeah, so what's really going to shock people is as much as there's been a lot of media coverage about the uh, Colombian mercenary portion of this group, significant number of the operators uh, in this uh, assassination have links to US law enforcement. Shit. No, no, no. Um, they, were, they were DEA snitches. They were DEA snitches. They right. don't have links to law enforcement. Some of them have. Some they were snitches. Some they, of them that's have their links. links. They yeah. were, there was four or five of them were DEA agents, informants, basically. Right. I don't know how much you know the story, but this story sent me down a massive rabbit hole. Yeah. Break it down. Break it down it for the people. It is a great story. Break I mean, down the story. Great, if great's the right word. Great's really I haven't got, bad I haven't phrasing. Got, yeah, I was, it's a bit mad phrasing, but it's <laughs> it's a story that tells you, it's that shows story. you the way of the world. A hundred percent. Right? So... Cut a long story short, and I don't have the exact details on me right now. Um, but ultimately, there was a Haitian business, Haitian American businessman based out of Florida, mm-hmm. who decided that it should be him who's president, mm-hmm. and the current president should no longer be uh, in in office mm-hmm. or alive. So he contacted a private uh, military organization somewhat uh, con- private contractor military contractors somewhat similar to a, a smaller scale version of blackwater mm-hmm. which is the one name everyone knows in the, google them. in this space mm-hmm. um they then went around creating a team basically of people to, to kind of get this done um you rightly said something like 23 of the 32 some shit like this of the uh, mercenaries who were hired were colombian and were trained in colombia um then there were some two two or three haitian americans and and some other people then there was also before the operation was carried out these men were flown into haiti and they were doing like practice drills right uh, of how to carry out this uh 
this operation, if mm -hmm. you will. What? They also suspect that there are several cabinet members who are in league with this coup d'etat attempt, right? Because once these mercenaries entered the president's uh, compound, his personal private security guard, the army, no one put up a fight. Just to confirm, there were no Nigerians involved in this. Unfortunately, no. We get blamed for everything. Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there were no Nigerians in this. It was a strictly kind of Latin American kind of thing. Um, Why are you looking at me we'll, for? We'll stick you, to hot mail. your people, though. We'll stick, we'll stick to hot mail crimes. But yeah. you see your people. Hot mail crimes, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the presidential is, murderers is like way yeah. above the pay grade. Call the, call the Latinos for them ones. Yeah. See, I told you just like your people there. I'll get one back for you too. Yeah. Well, carry on. There is a pigeon in your bank account. Yes. Yes. You we that. require the details. Good afternoon. I'm calling from your bank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, shit. So, so, so they suspect that there were, there were some influences from within the government because they kind of allowed this to take place, yeah, right? I mean, it has the president right, wasn't yeah adequately protected Mad. his personal bodyguards didn't fire a single bullet Mad. nothing went down he got shot his missus got she took yeah, a stray yeah. yeah she took a stray in the she arm survived survived yeah. yeah she she flew out for treatment and flew back for the for the funeral um and he was a fairly a relatively deeply unpopular president right he's going to put um, through some pretty controversial constitutional reforms yeah and it was already arguably overstaying arguably his, his term, ended, his yeah. term how long right? was he there Four years, four, four and a half, five four, years. Five years like that. He was like arguably they need to come under to a year. They over think that's his. long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carry on. Yeah. But that's it. That's it. So, Crazy. so that went down. The people, the people them of Haiti who didn't like the president, actually went mad when this mm -hmm. happened, right? Because it's just a, a matter of state pride, I guess. Bruh. Then they they rumbled these uh, these mercenaries as to their hideouts and da la la. There was a shootout. Police captured some seventy five percent of them. Three or four of them got shot mm -mm -mm. trying to escape. But all of that also leads you to think, right? There was definitely a plan in place because these mercenaries didn't like execute their strategy, jump on a helicopter and bounce. No. They they executed their, their their mission. They killed the guy, but they're they're still in the country because they're waiting for whatever phase they might just two. Just went back to Airbnb. Phase two of chilling. the plan. No, this is what I'm saying. Crazy. So phase, there's phase two of the plan. <laughs> There'll be a, like where this Haitian American guy has flown in. Do you know what I mean to to take command or something? So I disagree right? with you on this point. Either I way, think sold down the river basically. They, I, I don't know. Whatever. Either way, the plan didn't go as according to plan, and these men got captured and and got their mm -hmm. ass kicked. There's always basically. something going on Put in on Haiti. Camera. Like there's always something going on. Like poor country, but like. Wyclef Jean, didn't he? He yeah. ran for presidency a good for, I think probably when Jovenel won and he got fucking popped. And then someone called 911. Well, if you, that's very good. Uh, if you, oh, uh, I will say, by the way, on this, Haiti, <laughs> oh, Haiti is the um, epicenter to a lot of uh, conspiracy theories. Um, what else happened while we were away? The Israelis built this thing called Pegasus. Um, to snoop on all you motherfuckers. More on that later. Mm. That Jennifer actually links quite well with the mercenary stuff. It's as basically well, right? the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. Yeah. Turn back the hands of time Benefit and are them, knocking man. boots yes. all over again. Ben Affleck. We salute you. Yeah, he's done very well for himself. Is that is it? Is it a Batman swag? Mm. I mean, I I don't even know where it came from. I didn't see this coming, but you know. You get the damsel go after sis, you kick Superman's ass. Go, 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 sis. Um, this could end terribly. Episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and probably 21 managed to achieve significantly more views and streams than certain shows on the newly founded GB News. Oh. Um, <laughs> You motherfuckers will never be fucks, but you'll always be vermin. <laughs> and oh, big up my on a, on a roll today, bro. Big up Nigel Farage, who they are apparently bringing in to get more views than us. Probably the best strategic move that they're going to make. They'll I mean, probably actually turn them into a serious TV channel. Ah, uh, they'll grip. They'll grip up Piers Morgan as well at one stage. At he's, he's flirting on that line. Uh -huh. he's begging to be fucked. This guy, hundred percent. And we're gonna stick. get on to Piers Morgan, oh, friend another. Of the show. Friend Another white boy summer representative. It's looking very disgusting on your boat, Johnny. I'm not going to lie. Is Piers um, invited? Piers might be invited. Johnny's VIP list is looking dowy. Piers has got access in America. so <laughs> He's got access 
even here, bro. Yeah, I mean, he's got more access here than in America. It's getting less. It's getting less acceptable to be Pierce Morgan's friend in this country. But now that we've blasted through the main significant things that we missed since we were gone, and I'm sure there are a few other things, but whatever. Where should we start today? It's been a very busy week in general across the world. Um, Where do you man want to start? We we can a little bit focus on the Euros. We I think everything that needs to be said about what happened in the aftermath of the Euros has been said. We don't have a uniquely different take to anybody else's take out there. There's been thousands. Clearly we are in support of the three young men who went up there and missed their penalties. Clearly we are not in support of the racist abuse that they received all across social media. But ultimately, there's nothing new for us to say. It was a horrible situation, which we kind of probably all saw coming. What I will say, there was an episode that we did probably five or six ago where I was asked by, I think it was Johnny, like, who would I play for? You know, if I was a footballer um, and I got big international level and I had the choice between England and Nigeria. And if you listen back to that episode, you could see me almost umming and ahhing because I wasn't really sure where I stood on it, who I aligned with, who I felt in solidarity with the most with regards to my background and my upbringing. If you need any insight as to why people like myself feel this way, ladies and gentlemen, after the Euros, you had a very, very clear example. There is a very uniquely weird thing about being black full stop. But when you are black and you are born into a country which is predominantly white, one that colonized your mother and your father's home country, part of the reason why you are here and they came here, you are never really made to feel ever as though you are really part of the fabric. And that's something that I thought when I was a kid, when we experienced racism for the first time, would get better as I got older. The reality is that this isn't something that's improving. It's something that is fairly cyclical and that sometimes it becomes, it comes, sorry, to you in the most pure, thick, raw, obvious way. And then it kind of disappears and it goes back to being some of the more subliminal, intangible means of racism. But now we're in an era, unfortunately, where every single level of society, whether it be the playground, whether it be the government offices, we have this and it is rife. And it is it's suffocating, it's upsetting, but ultimately this is why so many people struggle. Even when they get sucked into the romance of a tournament like the Euros where we got to the final, they struggle to really feel a part of it. And then when things go wrong, we are reminded why we were never a part of it in the first place. That's all I wanna fucking say on this thing. This shit is gonna continue. Every single time a black player makes a mistake in any game, in any sport, you're gonna see this. All I have to say to my black people out there is just stay strong because it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. We just have to do better. Shout out to, um, shout out also to brother Yemi, who uh, wrote his thing for yeah, complex.com. My, um, my boy and my brother, my actual brother, um, Yemi, who is a, who is a journalist. Um, he did an article on this for, for complex. Uh, me that. and him, you know, we, you know, we're brothers. We have conversations, me and my three brothers, two brothers, sorry. We have conversations like this all of the time. And you know, he, he's six years younger than me, but he feels the same. It's, it's, it's a very, very uniquely common experience for all of us. Like it is what it is. Is it the social media companies? You know, I think if you were, if you were on social media that day, you would have seen a very vocal me, you would have seen a very vocal Johnny going on about where we think the changes should be made. I think that social media companies have a part to play. Johnny somewhat agrees, but he thinks it's a much wider issue and I agree with that as well the truth is probably somewhere in the middle right we need a holistic approach if we have social media companies policing it a little bit better that doesn't get that doesn't eradicate racism and furthermore if we've got Boris Johnson perpetuating these kinds of these fuckeries then social media company policing doesn't really achieve much at all so I get your point but they still need to do something. Yeah. I mean, they obviously could do something because it's so evident that you type the word COVID <laughs> and you post it pulled down. Now you get all kinds of, you, you try and hashtag anything and there's, there's literally what they're designed for capturing metadata. Yeah. Like, just what this text is. So it's very obvious they could do something. For me, the point is that by the time people are posting shit on social media for it to be filtered, it's already too late on a societal level. So they could do something to filter it. 
but the problem already exists behind the keyboard, right? So if you recently, um, Michael Holdings written a book, if you don't know who Michael Holding is and you're West Indian, firstly, chat to yourself, but also go and ask um, your parents if they're actually from the West Indies or your grandparents. And they'll tell you who Michael Holding is. He was basically the, the world leading cricketer during the seventies and the eighties. <coughs> and he has, he tells a story where he met Tony Gregg, who was the England captain. And he was discussing in the context of racism that after meeting Tony Gregg and seeing him a few times, he realized that Tony Gregg himself wasn't a racist, but he lived in a society and lived in a country where it was inevitable that someone would grow up and developing and develop the belief system that Tony Gregg eventually did. And through becoming friends with Tony Gregg, Michael Holding kind of made him relearn his behavior, change his ways, um, and develop this new understanding and, and then was no longer a racist or learned the things that he was saying and doing were racist. So the point that I make and the point that I tried to make and Rich and I had a chat about it was that, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. You can filter for posts and that might help. That might help. But the point is that society needs to be deconstructed and society needs to address the root causes of why people end up as racists. Facts. Why are people Facts. posting shit that needs to then be filtered? Facts. That's the wider issue. That's kind of where our disagreement on this topic comes. 100%. Um, and when you have a media landscape that's dominated by people like Nigel Farage moving into GB News, the politicization of news, the... Monetization of black pain. There's that. There's that. You can get into that if you like. But where 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 the government is passing laws to demonize journalists on, on the scale Ooh. of... Nigel Farage and Edward Snowden, but also threatening to introduce laws that would put journalists in jail just for embarrassing the government. We're getting onto that. Just for embarrassing the government. When you have a government that seems hell-bent on leading a war on woke, on culture wars and attacking cultural institutions that demeans the value of education um, in, in this country, when universities and colleges are attacked as being political institutions. Uh, and when you have a society that, uh, or a government that propagandizes a culture where it's where 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 national pride is mixed with xenophobia. It's inevitable that people are going to grow up in a in a society in an apparatus that it becomes acceptable to attack people who don't look like them. Speak um, to your white people, bro. And that's basic. That's the problem. Social speak media companies to, could filter, but speak to your white people, bro. But I, yeah. I'm holding you forever. Wait, we're holding Johnny accountable mm. for mm. all of white people fuckery going forward. <laughs> all of it. Every single time white people it. fuck up, I'm going to come to Johnny and be like, why? Why have they done this this week, buddy? Yeah. Explain it. Explain me. I wouldn't blame Johnny. <laughs> You're just going to blame I, him? I wouldn't, I wouldn't oh, hold Johnny why? accountable. Yeah. Why? For something like this, yeah. I'm joking, by the, the way. way I, but kind of not. It, yeah, kind of not, though. Like, as a representation, <laughs> as a figurehead. That's fine, because I do blame you, man, as for a second missing the penalty. Exactly. So. Fair. Exactly. Um, something like this, though, I think um, after a certain number of years of like trying to solve the issue, um, in various forms, whether it's like whatever, kick it out of football or mm. like just generally. I think it comes a point where people have to stop asking for stuff, right? So you have to stop asking and you have to start taking stuff, basically. And I think the lack of organization within the community is doing it a disservice, basically, right? So at the like beginning of lockdown, uh, two, two Asian Americans get slapped up on road because of the similar discriminatory ill-conceived ideas that oh yeah these men are bring the ones who are to blame for covid or whatever and what three four months in there are various anti-asian discriminatory laws that get passed right yeah similar with the jewish community yeah some bread drives around in a car like during whatever we covered the story right mm -hmm. yeah and Israel Palestine had, on Edgeware Road or some shit and he had his speakers loud and she he was saying some, yeah. some uh um anti-Semitic mm -hmm. phrases and yep. whatever. Well, fuck, I can't remember what the fuck he said, but it, it was nothing good. Um, and that gets obviously not only national attention, but you know, the legal ramifications. Um, well, the guy was arrested basically him and his three car envoy were arrested, mm -hmm. charged with various hate speech, uh, legislative like crimes basically. Right. So I think, uh, I don't blame Johnny. I wouldn't hold Johnny accountable or, general white people accountable for this. Do you blame us? Yeah, 100%. Because I think there's a lack of organization. Like, there comes a point where you have to, like, stop asking for shit. Like, oh, yeah, it's a Facebook uh, 
do a better job at uh, policing the algorithm. Oh yeah, like no, like at some point, people have to organize and whether. So the Palestinians are a good example of this, yeah, where they, I guess they're smaller in number or whatever, but they may try, they're up against a power greater than themselves, right? So they may try boycott or this or this, like various types of media related initiatives or whatever. The point is, I think it all comes back down to like unity within a given community and then utilizing that unity to get the change that you're looking for basically right so whether that that and i'm not talking about little cancel this and cancel that oh some comedian was you know on the on stage and said the n-word yeah let's cancel him yeah cool we can cancel yeah. him but i'm talking about on a more institutional level yeah but and i, and I know you meant that I, I knew that's where you were going right like i guess your frustration or your solution more to the point um, involves a greater deal of influence and power, which our community as a whole right now collectively doesn't have yet. Well, right? We are still infants. Though, right? In terms of our journey here, we're still in our infancy, right? Like generations like my generation, the generations that come after ours are the ones that are really going to understand and benefit from the fruits of generational wealth and understand the power in community thought, community monetary pooling, et cetera, et cetera. Our parents and our parents' parents, Windrush generation and so on and so forth, didn't have those powers from day one, were never given those powers. There are people from the Windrush generation who are still getting kicked out today. So yes, you can say in an idealistic situation that if we gathered our thoughts, gathered our money, gathered our intelligence together, we would be able to boycott or we'd be able to play to do the capitalistic play of we're going to withdraw our money from your businesses, from your initiatives and so on and so forth until you take us seriously. But the reality is it's still we're still not strategically set yet. And that's not our fault. I think that is our fault. So you're always going to be you're always going to be trying to in in any kind of scenario like this, you're always going to be trying to push a ball uphill, right? Like whenever you're trying to cause any kind of systematic change, the the people who are benefiting from the way things are now are going to push back against that, right? So it's normal that that it's not going to be easy for you to achieve the change that you're but trying to achieve. America, right? Let's take America. Let's take America. America, for just, example. Just just to counter the point you made earlier. I think we, we talked about Stephen Lawrence um, a few episodes mm -hmm. back, right? Uh, when we came across Stephen Lawrence Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. um, and his mum, uh, Doreen Lawrence, mm -hmm. I think is her name. Baroness. Was, Baroness that Doreen Lawrence. She is a good example of someone who's been able, obviously it's taken her 20 years and she's started by herself and a cause, basically. She had the pain of a mother and a cause, her dead son, right? And over, whatever, a 27-year period, you've been able to rally a community to affect change, right? So whether that's legislative and of course it hasn't been easy and of course she's gone through a million trials and this, tribulations and that and this and that, but she's got something done, right? And that's yeah, one lady. But that doesn't stop, but you, but you know that doesn't stop the Tory government from increasing stock It's not a search. Tory thing. So no, that's no, no, why no, no, I was no, no, saying no, no, when, no, no, when, no, when he was not, talking. I'm not trying to draw, draw a governmental uh, line in the sand here, but for everything that Baroness... Doreen Lawrence has done, on the other side, there is a much powerful institution, i.e. the government, who can increase their stop and search powers, which typically exponentially again, target, again, disproportionately was the, the word unity. I was looking for, young black people. What's the solution? If, if I take the, U, the US as an example, slavery. I, well, I, hang on, hang on a second. There were no reparations, right? Sure. They're, they're currently, there's been no so again. We're not. You're not even starting from a low ebb. You're literally starting from a hundred. I don't laps care behind. about all of that because it doesn't matter. But about, it's but it's relevant. It is relevant, but I don't think complaining about where we're starting from is going to help. Right? Like the point that you mentioned about uh, the government being more powerful than than Dame or Baroness um, Lawrence is true, right? But that's against just her. But there's going to be a million people like her with institutions and people who are fighting. And my point is that. These people need to kind of come together, pull, I don't know. Like, I'm not a community organizer or, or anything like this. But from what I see, the other groups have particular bodies that protect their civil liberties. 
basically anti-defamation leagues this and that there are there are there are bodies that they them, the communities themselves have created to protect themselves basically and i haven't seen that within the black community is the point that i'm making okay man honorary niger boy wrap this one up what do you think in a few sentences about what you've just heard that your your people have caused uh <laughs> That's two cards I get Please to play now. Please represent them. <laughs> yes, but briefly. Um, no, but in all seriousness. I think it's. I think the organisation and the solidarity point is is interesting. It's it's certainly interesting in the context of our last episode where we discussed this government report coming out about white kids being underprivileged because of this industry of uh, minority organisation. It's funny that you guys don't think. Tommy doesn't think that black people organize themselves to a significant extent, and yet the government believes that it's because black people are so well organized that white kids are getting poorer. But that's not what the report said either. The report, if you remember, said there's a cottage industry of sure. charities sure. supporting underprivileged but children these are the of colour. That's not the same but thing. These are, these, but yeah. are the, these are the kinds of... That's the kind of solidarity and organization that you speak of. It's just you don't think it's particularly effective. I think that, I think that yeah, I think that the black community may be... It's not really my place to say, but maybe could do more, though it does a lot, could do better, although it does very well. It's not it's not necessarily for black people to make people it's not for black people to make white people less racist. And that's something that has to be fixed from within. That's that's an institutional problem Amen. on a national level. Eighty seven percent of this country is white, only thirteen percent of it is ethnic minority. It's not for the thirteen percent to influence that eighty seven percent. Um black people can do uh should do um what they can but it's really got to be white people and the thing that actually gets me and what you were saying tommy is that i don't particularly like dawn butler and i don't particularly like diane abbott but the quick fix or the fix to this is to have greater black representation in parliament that's something that's very easy to say but if you look at the examples of famous black people in parliament in politics you have to martyr your life. Kemi Badenoch. You have to what your life, You sir? have to martyr your life. You have mm. to be prepared for an awful quality of life. People yeah. like David Lammy wear shit constantly. constantly. People like Diane Abbott wear shit constantly. People like Dawn Butler wear shit constantly. You can disagree with their politics. What do you mean But they get attacked. Shit? They get attacked and the vitriol that they wear is on a different level um, than almost any other MPs because they're high profile black MPs that they attacked in the sense that uh, they are. So when you say wear shit, you mean they get uh, publicly abused. attacked yeah, and yeah. racially, pu okay, racially abused, okay. publicly attacked. Their inten uh, intellect is brought into question in a degree that's not comparable to other MPs. Tommy, thought, Tommy thinks you were talking about their drip or something. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure exactly how he was like using Someone they, said they David Lammy's David David got shit crep and he got, <laughs> he got crep checked on Tottenham High Road and yeah. it's tough. No, but, but, but it, it, I think the organisation point is interesting, but it's not for black to be people. Fair, though, to cure yeah. white people's racism. Yeah, 100%. What were you going to say? You can finish up before we no, move. No, no, it's all good. All I, right. I think I made my point. My point is basically that we need to be better organised about it. And Johnny, I don't think, I just, I just, Johnny's I always struggle when it's, when, when so matter of fact that that is the one solution. And it sounds like that's what you're saying is I, the only solution. Yeah, I, I feel like I am because like the Johnny's point earlier is to like, on a societal level, we need to understand why someone is being racist. Cool. I think that's a hundred percent important, but I haven't got the time to deal with that. So what I've got the time to do is to band together with 50 other men and boycott something or push a message or whatever to get the change. So we're going to talk about this later, I'm sure. The baby says one, two things about HIV. Hey, Segway and, King. And Boohoo drop him, right? So this is the kind of shit that goes down because Boohoo don't want a backlash from the gay community or from, we're from the HIV about, community. We're going to talk about boo. And it's the, anyway. same, it's the same thing, right? So like if you're able to to f essentially create a culture of fear that, that corporations are um, essentially more mindful mm. about, about, about what's being said societally, mm -hmm. and we're seeing this with Nike and some large corporations, this is what's going to ultimately affect change. Good talk, man. It went on much longer than we expected. Yeah, no, we, we, we were got, like, we, we were like, we, we, yeah, we were like, you've heard all the takes. We don't have a unique one. <laughs> here's, we we might actually, quite a few takes. yeah, we might actually have quite a few good unique takes. So, meanwhile, I mean, the Olympics have been popping. Um, Pop. It's actually been pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie, I've enjoyed quite a bit of it. Um, I had a really 
uh, awful moment where today I was watching rugby on mute and someone from Fiji scored a try. Um, and then when the name came up, uh, I said Anna Maria. That's when I realised it was female rugby um, being played. Oh, wow. Um, which is shit. Am I allowed to say that? I mean... Did you play rugby? No, I hated it. Did you um, play though? No, no, no. Did they I make hate, you play at school? No, no, no. no, no. Like Saint Thomas the Apostle was a football school, thankfully, and my college was a rugby college. But by then, I was just like, "You're already a bad man." Nah. S my D. <laughs> um, yeah, um, oh, but boy. that's not been the biggest news from the Olympics this week. Obviously, oh, no. Oh, no. one of our greatest Olympians to ever do it, mm-hmm. Simone Biles, um, withdrew from the individual all-round competition to focus on her mental health. She originally stated that it was due to some sort of physical injury, um, but then was sort of forced into revealing that she had hit a psychological block, Mm -hmm. which she felt put her at risk of injury, um, which is absolutely fair enough wanted to get her body and mind in check, so decided to withdraw, spoke to her teammates and said, I am gonna lose this for you, so let me step aside. They went on to win the silver as a group, which kind of vindicated her position. Um, But obviously we live in a world full of dicks, so she had to wear quite a bit of criticism. She went on to say that she was going to be taking the rest of the Olympics one day at a time. Um, But that did not stop Pierce Morgan and the like from laying into her about us celebrating quitting. Us celebrating people who put their mental health over their physical well-being and their desires to win. Um, We've been here before with Naomi Osaka just a few episodes ago. Gentlemen. What are your views on elite sports people at this stage, on the biggest stage of their lives, preparing for the Olympics for five years? How do you feel about them not fighting through the mental barriers? Um, And do you actually think we are celebrating quitting more than we are celebrating winning? Is there going to be a separate opportunity to slew Pierce Morgan? Or do we have to do it now? we'll, we'll, We'll work it in. It's going to be a bit like your phone contract, as slew as you don't, go. Don't forget, he will hear this <laughs> before he hits the ship with you, man. Yeah. Just slew um, as you go. I mean, I, I, I'm happy to respond to, uh, on, to quite seriously to the sports people bit, as long as I can come back and par Pierce Morgan afterwards. Look, or I can just par him Pierce Morgan now. Work it in. Um, I don't know where Pierce Morgan gets the audacity. I'm not going to waste this chance. Gets the audacity, <laughs> um, considering that what this guy is probably closest thing to a sporting achievement was talking shit about Alistair Cook 10 years ago because he's yeah. friends with Kevin Peterson. Yeah. Um, he talks about elite level performance. He got cancelled from CNN. Yeah. Nobody fucking watches CNN anyway. How do you get cancelled from a TV station and nobody watches? Um, and as a, as a former newspaper editor, responded to elite level pressure so well, he took the decision to hack a dead girl's phone. Yeah. Uh, as well as walking off a, a set when being confronted by a very talented weatherman. Yeah, this guy is not someone who should be listened to in either the sporting context. He's got the wisdom to support Arsenal, uh, nor <laughs> in the mental toughness uh, context. Um, given that he was a failure in America, uh, he was a failure of broadcasting in this country, uh, and was disgraced for uh, a questionable uh, editing standards uh, at the elite level of journalism. Uh, fuck Pierce Morgan. Fuck everything he stands for. <laughs> from his shoes to his dusty hairline. Am I happy about elite level sports people finally confronting their mental health? Yes, I am. I'm delighted about it, to be honest. I'm delighted and I'm glad that other examples have been set. I think this is another person that Piers Morgan was talking shit about was uh, Emma Raducanu in, in Wimbledon. 18 year old oh, girl. Oh, did he have smoke for her as well? He had she big smoke almost for her. died on that fucking. She had a panic attack. Like, literally, it was, so you it, could see her. So, anyone I, I've diagnosed with anxiety, anyone who's been diagnosed with anxiety, could see that this girl was having a panic attack. It was very, and it took him two days to come out with it, and that was something that pissed me off at the time. But they came out and said, panic attack. 
He was so giving I a smoke. He I was actually t- missed yeah, that. So this, I, she, I, the next day she came out and said, I had a moment, yeah. but I'm better. I didn't know that a day after they then actually acknowledged yeah, they it was came a panic out, attack. That makes so much more sense now. I don't know if she said that. She, 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 she said didn't. she had breathing Yeah, difficulty. yeah, she yeah. didn't. That's my point. Yeah. I only saw the day, interview the day exactly. after. Yeah, yeah, they loosely came out and basically admitted yeah, it was yeah, a panic attack, yeah. which is good. Good, they should say it. And it, But again, if she's not willing to talk about her mental health publicly, that's entirely her prerogative. But it came out that... So people were waiting for Piers Morgan to talk some shit. I'm glad for Emma Raducanu that she has seen someone like Simone Biles go through this. And it's awful that Simone has had to go through this. From what I understand, actually, it's more ADHD related than it is anxiety related. And uh, people think that having ADHD just means you can't focus and you start doing throwing weird shit. It's actually an inhibitor for any other reaction uh, or emotion that you're feeling. So if you're... If your routine, you've got a particular routine that you do before an event and, for example, you've done your left laces, then your right laces, and that starts making you feel anxious, ADHD will amplify that feeling. If you feel frustrated because you've not landed a routine, ADHD will amplify that feeling of frustration. It clouds your ability to to, to reason. And uh, it's good for Emma, and it's awful that's happened to Simone, that she has seen an elite level sportswoman Let's not fucking forget just how many gold med- Olympic mean, gold medals. Not I even mean, been to bro. an Olympics. You have to be obscenely good at your sports bro, just to crazy. turn up at an Olympics. It's crazy that people can even speak. But this she's wo- 23, 24 bro, as well. This woman, <laughs> Simone Biles is so good at gymnastics that she does such a high degree of difficulty in her moves. They don't know judges how to- don't know how to score it. <laughs> yeah. She's she is the goat. She is like she's literally a little she's Michael got, Phelps. She's, she's, she's got a couple of un- moves named after her. Yeah, she's yeah. unbelievably good. Yeah. So Good, good for Emma, good for other people, good for other women, other women of colour, whatever, that they have seen this happen. And it's awful that Simone's had to go through it. But I'm glad that she has done it publicly because... Women of colour is very important in that as well. That's You might yeah. talk about that. That's very good for women of colour. You can as well. It's good for women of colour. It is good for women. It's not, but please I'm not a woman of colour, but it's good for women all right, of colour. We'll wait for you to get a tan when you come and back from holiday. Come exactly. Then they will be talking in, about in all the coloured weeks. issues. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be bang, that we into, all I'm gonna be bang into colourism in two weeks. <laughs> um, but... It, it, it's good that she has set a stand and it's good that she's she's set an example for other people from, from all walks of life, young people, older people, elite level sportsmen, up and coming sportsmen um, and, and women. And, uh, and it's good that she's taken a stand for her own rights and that she won't perform. She won't perform if she's not feeling in the right space and that's entirely healthy. You don't expect footballers to perform with torn hamstrings. This is Simone Biles, 14 years old and onwards, tearing shit up. This is... Simone Biles, who went through that whole Larry Nassar mm-hmm. fuckery um, as she was taking on the world. This is Simone Biles, who was racking up golds with kidney stones, passing kidney stones. This is Simone Biles, who was racking up golds with broken bones in her feet. Broken toes. And Pierce, yeah, I don't Morgan. understand why we're talking about this. To be honest, because because, like, because Pierce because Morgan is like a professional uh, uh, troll, right? So he'll say stuff like this to to troll people and get a reaction, and people bite and regularly bite, and it causes a conversation right, about shit that we don't give a fuck about. Fuck him! Like, should she have fought through? The fact I, that should she have? I don't care. Like, she should do what's right for her. If she's decided pulling out is the right move, because. My sport what would you is, want your kid to do in that situation? Her sport, like the sport that she's chosen, like, and I'm not going to pretend to understand the, you know, the... You don't know the, how to do the, a twizzle? The, yeah, the particularities of her sport. Push your twizzle, but not a move. the fact that a matter is... It's called a twizzle. It's a... Twist. Twisty. Twistle? No. It's just called a twist. Yeah, but you twist in the air, it's called a twist. I think it's called something else. Somersault, three and a half. Something prettier. Twist, turn. I thought it was called a twizzle. So I have a similar, obviously, uh, understanding as you guys have just demonstrated. <laughs> so like, uh, so so I'm not going to tell you whether she should carry on or not or whatever, anything like that. But what I will say is if she's decided that this is the best, um, this is the best avenue for her, let her do that. It, it deserves not even a headline, half a paragraph when you're wrapping up the new stuff, like only because she's as good as she is, right? Mm-hmm. Apart from that, like this is a personal decision that she's made, and like like I was googling earlier to see if I could find the guy's name, and you you mentioned earlier yeah. Larry someone or Larry Nassau. So she's been through stuff in her life, right? Yeah. So serious she was, shit. When yeah. she was super young, she went in and out of foster care. Yeah. She's obviously gone through this. Uh, uh, 
whatever sexual abuse predator sexual abuse predator that was part she of the, front US, the campaign against him because yeah, US, US, the US, US gymnastics protected gymnastics, this guy for yeah, years team mm. and so she's had a tough life and for her to turn around and say look I'm not in the right frame of mind to do this super dangerous sport <laughs> Cool. Like, like that, I don't feel she, like it deserves a conversation. She's the also, only reason we're talking about it is because of Pierce Morgan. That she's no, no. Like, there was criticism before, but he amplified it massively. He he put the tweet the night before saying, Look, "Beware! Oh, I'm I putting this. Up, I'm going to write this I'm thing gonna write that's going to upset." Ooh, Twitter. Ooh, but that's what I'm saying. Man. But that's literally what he does. Yeah, and that's what's caused all this conversation, right? Otherwise, it'd just be, no, "Oh, how brave is anyway. Simone?" And yeah, then people no, no. just move on. People no, no. people were questioning whether or not she the big had thing in, in American the mental resilience to be a champion, which is actually just the chat. most <laughs> idiotic thing you've ever heard. Like, I think she's... You don't argue back with these I think people. she's earned herself a quite a bit of goodwill with the, all of the gold medals that, that she's won. I, I do wonder if, Zid <laughs> I wonder if Zidane has what it takes mentally to win a Champions League after winning four. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's it's on the face of it. It's so absurd. It's, so it's not worth yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, like, I hear you. But she did tweet saying the outpouring of love and support I've received has made me realize I'm more than my accomplishments in gymnastics, which I never truly believed before, which is actually quite heartbreaking. Um, in other news, why is softball a sport at the Olympics? Why is skateboarding a sport at the Olympics? There's so many dead off sports. Can we Olympics. dead dressage? Can we just dead is it? Is that the dancing horses? Yes. Yeah, that is Can we just oh, dead bro. it, please? Yeah. So mum's going to be pissed at you for that. They, they, they're, not even, they're not even trying to fling in some Afro beats to modernise the thing, like the, the horse... <laughs> The horse dancing to something, some I don't trap. Get the sport part like, of it. What's the sport part? Like, of it? Do you the know horse how difficult it is to get to train a horse to do that. Yeah, but, but the trainers, the, the, but the but trainers not, trained it. But they're not giving the goal to the horse, are they? Exactly. They're giving it to the person on the horse. Yeah, but she, the, the, the she's the not a trainer. Controls them. She's not a trainer oh. though. But they have she's to, the jockey. But they, no, but they have to get the horse to do it. They have to give the commands to get the horse to do it to control the Give the, the horse, horse the gold, bro. Yeah, bro. I don't get it. <laughs> give the horse the medal. Well, maybe the horse it's the worst. It's one of the worst Olympics or some shit. No, basically. dressage, there's a high technical case. It's wow. like F1. It's, it's like F1, right? What, what I wasn't expecting was Johnny to be the dressage rider. Pro, like, dressage. Like, WBS, isn't it? Home County Mandem. All of that. <laughs> You're getting white by the segment, bro. <laughs> it's, the whole, it's the Home County Mandem. WBS. Jesus white Christ. By the segment. <laughs> no, no. Don't speak bad on dressage. Are you mad? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? It's the, technically the most difficult sport there. No, Do you know how hard it is yeah, to make them, dogs, them, them, them horses dance them, like that? Yeah. <laughs> bro, it's a madness. No, there's no, a you know what I will say. Skateboarding, like, I'm, I, I'm agnostic. I'm maybe I just kind of just don't give a shit. What was skateboarding is a finesse, bro. It's hard. It's that's very, a that's very okay. Many what was, sports. What, in hold there. on. What was the other one you mentioned? Uh, you mentioned softball. dressage. Softball. 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 Softball's very popular in Japan. I can see where they've snuck that one in. It's just rounders. Yeah, that's isn't not it? how it works. It's just a shit version of baseball. But that's not how it works. It's not because of where it is. Like they've they've had softball around. It's like it used to be in the Olympics. Come and then back. it got re-added for a while ago. This is not Went the first in 1990, one. Went in uh, two, uh, 2004, I think was the last one. Uh, Anyway, let's come back. The one, the one sport that I don't think should be in the Olympics, I think it's total bullshit, is this new three by three basketball. Yeah. That's mad chat. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. mad chat. They've already got basketball. You yeah. don't need two basketballs. Yeah, I don't get it. It's like having five aside football as well as the full fat thing. Yeah. I don't which, get it. Which, um, which they which... don't have, right? They don't have male football, do they? Yes, they do. Which, um... Yeah, it's big. Because I was reading something about why there's no Team GB. So there's no Team GB because it's difficult to organise players across different associations FAs, yeah. for the for the men's game there is a women's team gb yeah you sexist uh, and we no, did no, put a I team out game. we put a team out uh in 2012 but olympic football is quite big in other countries nigeria famously won hell yeah in 1996 that famous team with um come on jj Tariba west and come west jj Kanu scoring as well Bruv. um and messi's first international Trophy was an Olympic gold medal with Argentina. Mm -hmm. The rule is that you're meant to have under 23 squads and only three players over 23. Anyway, football is a thing. But really, the Olympics are for where it is the pinnacle of the sport. Mm. And that's where I think the argument against skateboarding maybe comes in because the World Championships and the X Games are going to be bigger than the Olympics. Fair. Um, which of the sports have you gentlemen been watching with a more perverted eye? Perverted eye? Define perverted. Which sports have you guys been watching for the honeys? <laughs> uh, the volleyball hasn't started yet. But the hockey has. Are you, is, the hockey has been lit. Are the hockey honeys? Lit. 
Yeah, all the uh, all the speaking all the... of volleyball, they refused to wear the, uh, the yeah the bikinis. Good for right? them. And Pink decided to front the uh, five grand fine. Fine. Yeah, Pink like is that. in the singer. Yeah. yeah. Did you not see it? What? Yeah. The Norwegian uh, volleyball team. Refused was that a real thing? Bikinis. I saw the meme. Was that yeah, a, no, real was a real thing? thing. Yeah. So they started. Explain they wore that for the listeners. They they decided the the Norwegian female uh, volleyball team decided to wear shorts instead of the pants mm-hmm. that they usually wear. So the Olympic Committee decided to find, find them Matt. because Matt it's Chat, against the patriarchy. Yeah, Matt Chat. Another win. Yeah. So they find them, and Pink said, "Oh, it was outrageously uh, courageous of what you guys did, and I'll pay the five grand fine or something like this." It was five grand or six grand at the, the volleyball fuck? association. By the way, by the way, Pink. The Norwegians are good for it. There's yeah. there's a lot of money in that country, but yeah, them man got, nice got black gold under the yeah, sea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, hockey. So yeah. What I will say is that all the all the meanest girls at boarding school played hockey. So oh, yeah. I get PTSD from oh, yeah? seeing the sticks. Oh wow! So did they did they did they hit you with a stick? Smack the shit out of me with the sticks. Yeah, bro. It's, it's called it was called um, poverty points. Did you man see the uh, the German judo player? I'm sorry, judoka. <laughs> is that what they called? Judoka. The yeah. ju- the German judoka Martina Tragios, as she was going on to fight, her coach grips up her like thing, her mm-hmm. gown, grips it like, get into the game and then gave her like one, two claps in the face, oh, like shit. hard. <laughs> Internet blew up. They were like, that's nice. abuse. Yeah, I missed it completely. And I was like, no, nah, they're Germans. He's he's fa- he's found a gray area. <laughs> <laughs> he's found a gray area for slapping up a bitch. <laughs> So it's socially acceptable to slap a woman if you're sending her into the Olympics. I was like, that's problematic. That's hella fucked Because if up. the police comes around, she's a judoka officer. I guess technically I it's pre-slaps. Because she's going to get slapped up. Well, you're not going to get slapped in, ju- in, ju- in judo. No, you're not. Well, she could get slapped by the... F- she could definitely get slapped by a kick. Yeah. You don't kick in judo. It's taekwondo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Judo's yeah. throwing. So, so you throw, it, throw each other yeah. the books. Yeah, yeah. Right. Did you guys see the story of the Ugandan? The Ugandan power lifter or something like that? No. This? Flew out to the Olympics. Uh, before the Olympics started, just bounced from the Olympic Village. Oh, yes. And oh. decided to claim, like, essentially some form of refugee status oh, in wow. Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Left a note uh, where he's in, on his bed or something. That read, Safe you, man. Yeah. That essentially read <laughs> something like, that's I'd a rather, long, that's a proper long game. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I'd rather, I'd rather live here. I'd rather work here or something yeah. like this. Yeah. And bounced. Yeah. I mean, obviously. What? In somewhere like Japan, it's <laughs> difficult to be incognito <laughs> yes. for a brother from Uganda. They're also not known for their openness to immigrants. Yeah. So he instantly got clocked at some at some um, train station, buying a, a train ticket to go somewhere else in Japan. Yeah, got deported on the same day. Yikes! Fam and friends are waiting for him in Entebbe, like at the airport. Yeah, no one sees him. He gets gripped up for rehabilitation. Mm. So they, didn't, they didn't let him get his gold medal first. Bro, they deported him out that's of the country. Rude. That's rude. But he, but he already bounced from the Olympic that's, thing. So he yeah, gave up he, his goal. He, he, he wasn't going to compete. That's rude. He, what he should have done is at least like competed and then dipped. Got himself right? a profile. Exactly. But anyway, he dipped too early. Yeah, he got shit. deported. He yeah. really didn't think And the government have arre- arrested him upon like the plane landing on the touch. I say arrest. Again, he's being rehabilitated. Yeah, just a little chat. <laughs> just a little chat. Just a little yeah. chat. Anyway... <laughs> Good luck to that brother. Good luck um, to that brother. It's ironic because there's this is the first uh, Olympics where there's like a refugee team, isn't there? So no, there have been refugee teams before. This. So there's a refugee a team that's being represented for stateless individuals. Yeah. Okay. And this this Ugandan guy just, <laughs> just got deported. So <laughs> it's it's quite. It's but a, what's pretty fucked that they they don't arrogant. let Taiwan call themselves Taiwan. They're called Chinese Taipei. Yeah. That's pretty fucked as well. Well, yeah. it shows you the power of China. Right? Yeah, basically. Crimea, yeah. a river. Yeah. Did you get it? <laughs> Jonathan Lindale Kirk, otherwise known as the baby. He got a double barrel surname. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's childish. Got into some really hot water um, this week. Now, everybody knows I like my rappers very real. Mm-hmm. Right, especially my gangster rappers, right? I like to listen to your raps. I like to see you on YouTube or wherever telling your real life stories. And I like the feeling of being absolutely frightened by the prospect of ever meeting you in person. <laughs> I like my real rappers. When Giggs was coming up, boy, I was scared to ever meet him. <laughs> and the baby is one of them, man. You might see him as the guy who makes a couple of songs which are a little bit poppy, did a song with Dua Lipa, but who wouldn't? It's Dua Lipa. Okay. Dua Lipa. Um, hmm? Sorry. 
Would you say about her? Would you say about the I queen? Think she can she can suck out. All right. Anyway, she was one of the first to jump on his back. Yeah, it's rude. It's rude. She was literally the first one to can jump on his let back. Me She's lad. also a, a COVID denier. Is but she? anyway, yeah. flat he's, earther. Yeah. He's a proper live wire. Um, we've heard the story of him killing someone. Um, Allegedly. No, very much so. He's a registered firearm holder um, and Second was amendment. acting in self defense. So actually killed somebody. Um, but I'll just throw in an allegedly just in case he hears this. We're not trying to get sued. Uh, but you're saying he legally killed someone yeah, in self defense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. We've seen him punch fans, people who pay for his music, in the face. Allegedly. Um, for getting too close to him at clubs where he is performing for them. COVID. Um, uh, or people who have filmed him when he's requested them not to. Um, this guy gets into a lot of trouble. Allegedly. Um, but this one. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> but this that one. Leads to good one. This one. Uh, it's a sticky one. To, still. To, to borrow a quote from the living legend, Dave Chappelle, he went after the alphabet people. <laughs> <laughs> During his set at Rolling Loud Miami, which looked like an amazing festival. Vibe, <laughs> look lit. They look very um, lit. The baby made some homophobic comments while addressing the crowd. He said, <clears throat> if you didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, or any of them deadly sexually transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two or three weeks, then put your cell phone lighter up. He then said, fellas, if you ain't sucking dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lighter up. He said something in between that as well. Now, many would read the room at this point, assess the damage, take stock, um, notice the backlash. Hmm. Not Jonathan. Mm. Nah, mm. Not, not Lindell. No, 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 no. He doubled down on Twitter oh boy. saying, I tell the fans, I'm back to an English accent. I tell the fans to put a cell phone light in the air and you lot start a million man march. I told <laughs> you, <laughs> like that. I told you, you lot digested that wrong, but I'm not going to lie. I'm impressed. Now show this same amount of support when a racist cop Kills one of our mm. black ass. The conflation. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. That's quite well. Quite well. Attempted, There's a second tweet. Fair. There's another one coming for you. Oh no. Then oh. there was a bit of a. Um, there was a bit of aftermath. He had some defense from hmm. the hip hop community. Hmm. I would put these two following rappers as arguably two of the worst people to come to your defense. Okay. In a situation. Okay. Like this. Ti. Yeah. Not great. Who is with Why is his that wife? Not great. Why is Ti? Who not is? Great? I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Tom. <laughs> so glad you asked. Ti and his wife are currently being accused of drugging and sexually abusing a number of women. Something that he denies, but it's something that is very much still open. Mm. Ti is probably not number one choice. But then, okay. then comes Tory Lanez. Ooh, that one. <laughs> who came to his defense? <laughs> Even Tory I know that Lanez, one. Yeah. a man who allegedly shot the woman we all know as Megan the Stallion. Mm. When we say gang gang, that's not what we mean. Mm. Um, the pressure got way too hot for Jonathan after the mounting public outrage um, and criticism that came in from everyone from Demi Lovato to previous collaborator Dua Lipa and Elton John. That's when you know you're fucked. Yeah, I was going to say, um, like, fucked when Elton John steps in. The baby apologised for his Whoa. homophobic remarks. You missed the tweet. You what missed tweet? my favourite tweet. What tweet? Oh, so there was an in-between part, right? Where he was like, uh, he did the tweet that you mentioned, yeah. right? Got the backlash. They were like, oh, you can't, you can't divert and bring up the black thing mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff, <laughs> which is literally what they said. <laughs> which was the response, to which he then tweeted back a new kind of cover, okay. which was like, you know, these uh, concerts are intimate and it's just between me and the fans. Yes, yeah. he did. Like, like, yeah. He said so what happens. I had, and I, I had a lot of sympathy for that no. because maybe he had no. a reasonable expectation of privacy. No. That's what I'm thinking, yeah? <laughs> this, it's Him not like... and a couple of thousand party goers, no. yeah? Maybe oh he days. thought, there were no cameras here. We're not being recorded. <laughs> yeah. This is an intimate little gig with me and, and 5,000 man. See, so this is what you lot complain about white people being racist in their own homes. I'm obviously taking the piss. <laughs> yeah, no. like, yeah. I'm Tom, obviously I taking get, the piss. I get piss. your point. Uh, reasonable if, if, expectation if, of privacy. If it was a comedy show and he had actually taken their phones, then he'd have somewhat of a 
ground to stand on, but this wasn't that. Um, but as I said, the pressure got way too much and he was forced into apology. Um, he then said, anybody who done ever been affected by AIDS or HIV, you lot got the right to be upset. What I said was insensitive, even though I have no intentions of offending anybody. So my apologies. But the LGBT community, I ain't tripping on y'all. Do you? Y'all business is y'all business. <laughs> <laughs> then he went on. And for any brands, networks, or artists that like to profit off of black rappers' influence on the culture without understanding it or having the patience to deal with what comes with the position we play in our culture, keep your money next time. Us niggas human too. Hashtag God bless. <laughs> and then he said, and this is my favorite bit, other than that, you lot, cheer the fuck up and be proud of who you are because <laughs> you can't make me feel less of myself. Big up himself. He must have taken chat. a lot of heat in that 24 hours. So for him to be that resilient, <laughs> yes. maybe he should be the one going around giving giving speeches to kids at schools and shit Wait, like this it sounds like, it sounds, like it sounds like Simone Biles could take a few tips. I didn't want to go that <laughs> far. Uh, I was going to drop Naomi Osaka and take yeah. my side of that. Yeah, or they should do a baby and yeah. Pierce Morgan interview <sighs> on how to stay strong in the face of public criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a freedom? Two-two FaceTime. Yes. Is there a freedom of speech angle here? So I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of black people playing the I can't be racist because I'm black card. I'm not sure the I'm not sure the I can't be homophobic because I'm black card works. <laughs> That's not what he said though. Yeah, it was basically it was like no. it, the bit you went trying to start a million man march. You've misunderstood the whole thing. You, you didn't even come, give you lot come against me. Uh, no, let me see the same energy for racist white cops. Yeah, yeah. That's I can't a big be homophobic. Deflection. I'm black. No, no, no. That's a big deflection. You guys didn't clock what went down. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't offer oh, the LG, okay. He didn't offer the LGBT community an apology. Okay. He said, "You man, sharp. Do you?" <laughs> He said, HIV, man, you man are right. I'm sorry. Sorry to you, man. I'm sorry. sorry you're you, you're man. right. Hey, man. Hey, you man, just keep man, doing your up, own man. thing. Like, you do you, I'll do me. We're all <laughs> so loving here. <laughs> and, and rightly so, in the sense that, like, he had to apologize to the HIV, HIV AIDS community because yeah. the misinformation that he yes. spread and all that kind of gas, yeah? First of all, this is a story very similar, to, in my eyes, to the Simone Bio story. Another story I don't fucking care about. Yeah? You are going to need to do better. This, this is, is a, a podcast, mate. This is a guy, yeah? yeah I'm the anti-culture guy. No, no, no. I'm just going to tell you why I feel this way, yeah? Okay. This is just one rapper who's on a small stage who ad-libbed some thoughts. His yeah? third eye is not open, mate. His third eye is not open. Stay woke, <laughs> But bro. Yeah, yeah, but one second, look, yeah? Look beneath I, I get all topic. of that, right? <laughs> do a leaper who, who sang a song with him and, and all this kind of shit came mm -hmm. out and was like... This is not the man I, I knew. Me. This is not, me, baby. not it's the man I knew. As well. I'm surprised and horrified, she said, yeah. Okay. I don't know the baby. I'm not surprised nor am I horrified. Yeah. <laughs> like coming up, yeah. <laughs> Walla. Like you think this guy who who came up uh, on the south side of somewhere is going to have the most um well-rounded uh, no not even well-rounded the most nuanced views when it comes to the lgbtq struggle no of course he's not right he's not gonna have nuanced views he might be i'm not saying he's he's pro or, or anti-gay i'm just saying this guy ad-libbed some things and all of a sudden it's front page news around the world tommy that's real cute but let me let I me care let about me, that. no 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 I, I, that's I, wait wait wait, wait. that's unfair. real cute that's real cute very unfair hang on to who it's real cute tommy but let me remind you what he said if you didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, or any of them deadly sexually transmitted diseases that will make you die in two to three weeks, then put your cell phone lighter up. Then, wait, 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 wait. You have to put it in context, right? Who then even he said, thinks... if, if, and all the women, you turned up with your pussy smelling like water, put <laughs> your phone up. Like, it, it was a lot of egregious shit he said, right? And if your pussy smells like water, put your phone up. Then he said the thing about- It means about, you've got good pH levels down there. Well, that's what he was yeah. trying to uh, get, get at, right? And then he said the thing about if you're a gay guy- That's what he was trying to get at. <laughs> then he said the thing about if you're a gay guy who's sucking dick in the car park, blah, 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 then put your phone up or something. So there was a lot of egregious no, shit that yeah, he said, right? Yeah. So there was not, there was HIV stuff. He said if stuff, you're not getting sure. your dick sucked, put your light is up so if you are getting your dick sucked in no, a parking no, said, lot i think he you said if you're doing your no, dick sucking said, don't put if your phone you're up not some shit. getting your dick sucked in a parking lot put your cell phone lighter up so if you're getting your dick sucked in a parking lot which is uh, by the way not a bad place to get some fellatio right like why can't i put my cell phone lighter up 
Like, no, no, why no. am I not invited to the party? Because I think he said the gay thing, right? So what if I'm gay? Yeah, I can yeah, like yeah. the baby and like dick sucking in yeah, the car park. So that's his point, right? So his point is, I'm going to say a bunch of egregious shit in between this music and put your phone up. Cool. I get Be offended. Stop buying his music. I get all of that shit, right? But like, is this news? <laughs> yes. This, this is news, yeah? Yes, it is. When shit's happening all around the world and we're talking, not us, but I'm saying we, the... The, the collective consciousness of society is talking about the baby being dropped, right? If anything, if I was the baby, I'd use this as a learning opportunity, yeah? <laughs> so that I start partnering with better, better sponsors going forward, yeah? Mm-hmm. Because if Boohoo are dropping me for this, yeah? Every sponsor I'm going with going forward is a full brand partnership, yeah? I'm not interested in none of these uh, haphazard little deals where then they're going to pass judgment and drop me on this, yeah? I'm looking to do... A full 360 Drake Nike kind of relationship because then you're not getting dropped. Like so, the first thing I wanted to say is I thought it was unfair on the south side of Chicago. Don't say Chicago. I said south side of somewhere. Racist. <laughs> Johnny, that, that, you're that, racist. That this guy, that this guy should be allowed to have a free pass to be homophobic because he's from the south side of anywhere. I didn't say that. Uh, I didn't say you should have free so you said you said you're not surprised because this guy's some yeah, guy I from the south side. I'm not surprised he hasn't got a nuanced opinion. Did anyway. you expect him to have a nuanced opinion? No. I, I don't think it's acceptable. Let me find out where the baby is from. Was your expectation? Let me find out where the baby is from. your expectation? I'll tell you why. Because, Please, because, house, my question. because house music originates from the 1980s South Side of Chicago. So it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not acceptable that because you're from the South Side of fucking anywhere that you get to be a homophobe. But more I didn't say any of that. You, can't, is, you from, can't attribute... He is from Cleveland, Ohio. You can't attribute oh, any of that to, to what I said. I didn't say any of that. I Johnny, said I'm not surprised gave, that, that he, he had an un-nuanced opinion. He's allowed to be a homophobe. Again, that's not what I said. So, like, if we were, if you want to play this game, I'm, I can play this game for the rest of the podcast, <laughs> right? Because that's not what I said. I very Fine. clearly said, I'm not surprised that he has an unnuanced opinion. That's not saying he gets a free pass to be homophobic. Fine. Yeah. You Please also issue an apology. You, you also Please don't. issue the a cease and desist. Uh, what, I, like I, the apology you owe the gay community? For and what? <laughs> So this is what I want to ask, more importantly, rather than one tummy up, is why do you feel mm. on the subject of sponsors dropping the baby so quickly? Yeah. Why is the gay dollar better organized than the black dollar? Why is it better organized? Well, it seems is that to what be. you're asking me. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, we that's something that requires research. Mm. If the question is, is it better organized? Yeah. I'd say yes. I say, why is it better organized? I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, it's pretty obvious. The the point that I was called intersectionality. Like, Mm -hmm. you can still be a hugely powerful, influential Jew and be gay. It's intersectionality is the answer to your question. Being black is unique. Yeah, it could be. I I, I don't know. Being gay doesn't. That's a good. kind of off the but cuff. anyway but anyway it's a good off the cuff thinking right yeah. it's the same reason they talk about trans the trans people being uh, easily accepted into society easier yeah. accepted into society if you're gay if you're gay and you are white shit is i would argue calmer way more calm for you than, a, than chris rock's the, got a great the, bit yeah on this. than the experience yeah. of a black person but anyway yeah so i so to answer your question i know you dodged my question to you earlier <laughs> What was my question? That's was fine. Your point? I asked you, did you expect the baby to have a nuanced opinion on that's on a the very LGBT? very uh, presumptuous because that's what you were trying to say earlier. How, I don't do, expect that do he should know be. Jonathan though. But to answer Rude. your question, to answer your question, I don't know why, but I think yes, they are better organized. Do you disagree? I don't disagree. No, okay. I don't. I just wonder. I wonder. But you, only because you made the point about seemingly your view is that the black dollar isn't sufficiently organized. Yes. So why why do you think that is? I answered it with like a boss. Yeah, he did as well. It was very good. Um, I just want to say on the subject of dropping and losing endorsements, boohoo. Um, Bastions of moral integrity. Buddy. Um, Modern day slavery Mm. during a global pandemic is okay, but this is where you draw the line in the sand yeah modern day slavery is actually quite profitable and attacking the gays isn't this is where you grow what's the modern day slavery as in the way do you not remember do you not remember when boohoo at the start of the pandemic in their leicester factories were exposed for having yeah yeah, yeah. for having importing people for importing people and having people working on less than a minimum wage three pound an hour or something without ppe in factories in leicester do you not remember that 
That I mean, I, mean, I was I, I was invested I was invested in Boohoo. Yeah. As a I was stock. surprised. That was I, a dark fucking week. I just assumed Boohoo was all Bro. out of like Bangladesh and shit no, was getting no, made no. in well, North I mean, as well. It, They've the, got the, a number of different <laughs> warehouses all over the place, but the Leicester ones are the ones that got exposed. It was at the start of the pandemic. They got a, they got a lot of people out of Bangladesh to yeah. Leicester. Um, to do but it doesn't make there. economic sense either, right? You might as well just. It's keep a lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot cheaper than hiring I mean, people in the UK, and they're allowed to still from the UK. And they're allowed to still say made in Britain, right? Yeah, but now once you know, in the aftermath of all of that, they now have a standards committee, I mm. guess, in house. So now they've become a beacon, a bastion, as you said, you said bastion, mm -hmm. right? Of morality. Um, yeah, I think you guys want to sit this one out, boohoo. Just, just saying. Um, but yeah, S Tommy, look, I'm sorry that that particular topic wasn't to your liking. Uh, I'm, we're two I'm for sorry, two. That we're two for yeah, two now. Quite a few You'll be happy to know yeah. we're moving on to um, things that you might want to talk about a little bit more. Hmm. Um, vaccination coercion. Oh boy. So Pretty Little Thing and Boohoo are owned by the same owners. Yeah? Oh, we're back on yeah. it. We're back on the... Uh... I don't know that. That's, That's why I don't I care just, about it. It's the same fa It's the same family. It's the Kamani family. They yeah. own a whole bunch of shit. Um, you should check them out. They're very successful. They dress like shit though. Um, yeah, so I... Um, I uh, got vaccinated um, week before... No, this week. Start uh, Back into last week. What'd you get? I got the... Golden standard. Yes. Pfizer. Mm -hmm. Super silver. Um, hmm? But I'm it's not going to lie, silver. lads. Why super silver? Because the high grade. <laughs> Golden copy, super silver. Super okay, silver no. Pfizer. <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. I was definitely, definitely getting it for the wrong reasons. Why were you getting it? Now, Shubza. I need to remind everybody because I'm getting quite sick and tired of being called an anti-vaxxer, anti-whatever. I'm not. I never have been. I had every intention of getting the jab eventually. But I just wanted to, you know, use my civil liberty um, of waiting. I was going to, I'll be real, I was going to wait about a year until I did it. Got to about, what are we? Going to be about August, right? Eight months. So I've got about eight months of the way. Mm -hmm. But can't lie, man. When they said that the, uh, the vaccine passports or the COVID passports were going to be the difference between me um, getting into the clubs that I never fucking go to, but in my mind knowing that that was probably going to be extended to bars and to football matches and all this other stuff, that kind of accelerated my uh, my visiting to to Stratford's vaccination centre. Yeah, it's not going to happen anyway. They're not um, going to they're not going to they're not going to implement vaccine passports. That makes me feel. Why do you think that? That makes me feel really really shit for the decision that I made. But um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because look, the conversations are becoming more and more frequent the feelings of, of of harshness between humans anecdotally are becoming a way more tense than they should be it's kind of like you know leave versus remain uh, during the whole brexit debacle which basically draws a line in the sand between what people think of others based on on you know how they vote i don't like the idea of this of governments coercing people into doing it the uk has a situation but the france situation for example is is is, is worse Right. And I know why this is worse, right? They had less, they had fewer people going to get vaccinated. So they had to, they had to hot man up and say, you can't even go and get your baguettes if you ain't got your vaccine, buddy. <laughs> right. Like they had to hot them up. I get it. And, and it worked. Um, they had like record applications for the, uh, for the vaccinations after Macron made those changes. People like their baguettes. But like, <laughs> for real. I mean, you ain't had a baguette until you've had a French one. Let's be real. Oh, yeah. Uh, 100%. Uh, Pause. Yeah. I walked into that. <laughs> um, how many, how many French baguettes have you had? You, you didn't pick up on the oh yeah, that's yeah. why I had to drop yeah. the pause. I was like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. you're like for sure. I, just, I, I was just, like, all right, then pause. My, my, my naive frequent consumer. Of my French my naive you? mind just thought you hadn't been to France, you peasant. <laughs> you thought you thought we were beyond these kind of juvenile jokes. Yeah, just, no, no, absolutely. you were wrong. Yes, just, yes. just thought you hadn't been to France. No, you need to grow up. Speaks yeah. fluent yeah. French. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't been to France you. on principle. I thought you hadn't been to France on principle. I went one time year year six. I said I'm never going back. I last time. My family went to France while grad dad liberated it. All right, go say, you know what I mean? Um, what he said. Um, but yeah, how do you guys feel about like the vaccination coercion that's going on? That's also. What do you mean, coercion? What do you mean? mean? Let him finish his question. I mean? just think it's a shit premise, but can. It's not a shit premise. It's an awful premise. Dominic Raab himself today admitted 
that the threat of COVID vaccinations is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is getting more people there's vaccinated. Definitely a co- co- so how can you say there's like not a, coercion? How, how do you feel you were coerced into it? By thinking that my liberties would be taken away if I didn't. But firstly, the government never came out and said that they're going to implement vaccine passports. They did. Bro. They said they were studying it and they've been newspaper leaks no government minister came out and you're said you're now suddenly a defender of, oh, fuck of, you, you of government make, you covid making policy making me defend the fucking Tories not you lot. let him land no, let him land because I'm, I'm keen i'm yeah, keen to I'm hear this to hear this i just I, I don't buy the argument this is the same this is the same line of thinking as people who say no no that no analogy. if you're Wait, if, if you're if you're 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 sensitive you're a conservative in what you can say no one's forcing you to get any vaccine if you if, if if it so turns out, you know there's a difference between forcing and coercion, right? I mean, they're largely the same thing. No, they're not. They're, not. they're largely they're the definitely same thing. Not. Okay, no, no, fine. No, no, no. All right. Well, uh, even uh, we could get into this, but yeah. it's a similar it's a similar line of thought. So when people say I'm not allowed to say what I think because it will offend Forget people the these Just days, tell us why you don't agree. Because nobody, no, even even if even if you believe that um, you're not able to get into a club or you're not able to go to a football stadium because yeah. you've not had a vaccine, even though the government haven't told you that, yeah. it's not. It's not a human right for you to have access to those not things. a human right for you to have social interaction with others. Why does that have to be in a bar? Why does that have to be in a club? Why does that have to be in a football well, stadium? Well, the idea is that most social places that have more than X number of people in its vicinity or in, in its location will require a COVID passport. But, right? they're, but they're not going to. Well, you don't they're know. They're not that. going to implement I where, COVID I don't know passports. where the certainties come from all of a sudden. So, so basically... The US is mid-pilot plan to institute this. So thing. there's almost... Europe have rolled the, out Yeah, and the, the US COVID is pa- the most the, anti-big government like, that there is. So I don't Europe know where has rolled out, come from. Europe has rolled out the COVID passport. So even if you don't feel it on a UK level, as a UK citizen, like... This is happening. I'm just surprised at the certainty, the level of certainty. But yeah, let, let's let Johnny land. I just I, Long John COVID. I just oh, very good. <laughs> uh, I think um, I think they're they're basically functionally useless, and I think that we know that on an institutional level. What is the point of What's a useless, what is the point sorry. vaccine passports? Okay, oh. so what does a vaccine passport prove? It proves that you've taken two jabs. Okay, now what does two jabs give you? Two jabs gives you something like seventy to eighty percent immunity from the virus. But it gives you some um, uh, some reduced capacity to further spread the virus because you're less symptomatic. Having a COVID passport does not mean that you are one, not ill, two, not infectious, and three, not contagious. Right. They're fucking pointless. Oh, I... Bro, they I have no so, so this is the reason this. you think the government is not going to put it in because of rationality. I mean, you're telling me the track and trace system took four billion to, to produce. Four, and what, 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 whatever the number was. It was like billion. four billion a day, bro. Yeah. So, so realistically, I don't, I don't agree with like your certainty in a matter where like you typically like big government. And all of a sudden, you're saying that you think the government won't act in a way that's it's so stupid. That, sure, but I don't think that's a, that's, that's a reason enough for, for you to think so absolutely that this won't go down. This has well, a the, very the Tory high chance of happening, right? No, I because six months ago, Boris Johnson's line was, this will never happen. Mm-hmm. And over the last six months, you have seen this significantly soften significantly soften to the extent where he's not willing to repeat the line that there will be no COVID passports, right? Mm-hmm. So then for you to sit here and speak with such certainty that it won't go down, to me is, you know, fugazi. Okay, so so the reason that I, the reason that I have such convictions is because I just don't think the politics makes sense. Boris, I don't think, can pass COVID passports well, with a majority of Tory MPs. I think there's a significant enough rupture in the Conservative Party and the strength of feeling against COVID passports you know how big is, is so significant that enough Tory MPs will defect, which means that basically they need the Lib Dems, who've already come out against it, and probably some Labour votes basically to get the it across the line. For it. To, get the, to get across the line. Almost the whole Labour Party is for it, and the Conservative majority is fucking but huge. It'll be, so it'll he can be, withstand the rebellion. So he can't withstand the size of rebellion that he's going to get from the Conservatives. And it's known that they'll need Labour votes to get it across the line. It will be the first political win in two years that Labour can have by the time we get to a vote on it. It'll be the first time that Labour has a chance to, uh, to firstly to oppose, but to affect government policy. They're not going to pass this up. So There's you're, no saying way that Labour... spike it. you're saying Labour will spike it for a political win? Yeah. That's not a very uh, inspiring view of politics that you have absolutely not well you accuse me of naivety i'd I'd say the same if you think it works any different no i think uh firstly 
there's a high chance that this happens. And secondly, although like I thought you were going to argue against Rich's point, like I largely agree with a lot of what you said, right? But I just don't agree with the way you said it, right? So I thought you were <laughs> gonna you were gonna disagree with Rich saying, "Oh, it's not convert coercion; it's more of a marketing." But he did disagree. Blah, it's blah, not blah, coercion. Blah. He didn't. He, he, he so he, exactly. I'm saying yeah. I thought the way he was going to disagree with you. I can come was back to that. Point. Talking about Please. degrees, I think it's right? Yeah. Saying that it's less of a coercion, more of a a marketing campaign. Which to is it, blah, which blah, it blah, is. blah, right? I thought that was the kind of avenue, maybe that he'd go down. Either way. It is very coercive, right? In the sense that you're looking at, um, it's, it's very strategic, right? I've sat down, I've looked at um, a segment of the population, a certain part of the demographic, under 30s, whatever, whatever. I've seen what their pain points are, what they're looking for. You're looking to go club, yeah, that's number one, yeah, okay. You're looking to go on holiday, number two, fine. Number festivals. three, festivals and concerts, cool. Number four, what else? You look at stand up comedy, what else are you looking forward to, cool. All of those things won't be available unless you take the jab, right? It's that's akin to a policeman that's stopping you coercion. and telling you, "No, nah, no, nah, you you don't have the right to to remain silent when you do," right? Or some shit like this. The like, yeah, they're not sticking the the needle into your arm, so you're not being forced. Yeah, but you're being coerced. That's the point that he was trying to get at, right? Where he's saying, pretty "Yeah, clear. that that's that's spot on, right?" And when you have employers. <laughs> also getting in on the act. Yeah, they're coming out and saying it. That's different. That's the added layer to this. And they are 100% emboldened by what the government yeah. is doing in these coercive tactics, which gives them, I guess, the, the other freedom thing, to run amok. The other thing to Johnny's point earlier about passing the Conservative Party, passing and blah, blah, blah. Firstly, I think you overestimate the size of the rebellion. No, I think you and, underestimate and it. And secondly, fine. I think... The government has already kind of done this by passing it on to private companies, right? So the government has said, no, we don't have, we haven't instituted a national uh, COVID policy or COVID passport policy, mm -hmm. but individual pubs and clubs and whatever can in, can mandate their own policies, right? Sure, so, that's a policy reaction function because they won't pass it in parliament. So this, and, and, and that's my point, right? So the point I was trying to get at is if they find that there is an appetite to pass this. So it's like federally or, or nation mandate, mandated nationwide. We'll just carry on going the way it is, which is a, a de facto mandate, right? Where uh, Abi Adi Bar and Grill doesn't want to get closed down or fined or pinged or, or whatever because of COVID violations. So the easiest thing for them to do is say, don't have a jab, don't come in. Right. Same as your employer <laughs> or what Piers Morgan said this week. Those who refuse to be vaccinated with no medical reason not to should be refused NHS care if they then catch COVID. I'm hearing of anti-vaxxers using up ICU beds in London at vast expense to the taxpayer. Let them pay for their own stupidity and selfishness. Guy, it's trolling, right? This guy's he's, trolling. He's literally, he's literally, Sorry. But let's not take this. Let's he's not a black go cab left. driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's he's not go left with him. Yeah, he's just a waste man. <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah. like, but, but it is... Black like, cab drivers are not waste men. Just I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, I've taken two jabs, right? So I'm nowhere near an anti-vaxxer. I've double jabbed. I was early, early doors. He, wants his, he wants his booster. He's ready. Hey, yes. I was double jabbed Third round, early doors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for the booster, Charlie. Just you got my you got my text. You got my number. Just text me. So so I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but people's people's liberties are being infringed upon. There's no How? doubt about that. How? Where? Because of the coercion that's being used. What liberty has been infringed upon? If I, Bro, if you're if you mean that in a legal bill sense, you are right. Our liberties have not been infringed upon. Right. But again, I think there is. A difference that I don't think you've been strongly fully encouraged. recognized between forcing and coercion. We talked about forcing this. would be law, would be bill, yes. okay. right? How coercion, coercion are the tactics that make you do something so without there being the illegal. If you don't get a jab, you lose your job. There's Come a coercion, on. mate. You Come don't, on, bro. don't get, a, don't it's take a jab, lose your job. Who said yeah, that? they'll never. Fucking, we covered it on the podcast three episodes. Who are the uh, the window cleaning people? Yeah, where the plumbers, Pimlico plumbers. plumbers. Yeah. There's bad the people. They're, that's my point, <laughs> mate. You're not listening to what we're saying. This you said the state is coercing people to take a jab. So we said, so who gives a we shit clarified what Charlie that. Does? We clarified that to you, right? So it's like if you can't get it passed through Parliament because of this apparent uh, backlash or whatever that right. you've, you've argued against, right? Then it's de facto, right? So you've just left it up to because one let's fucking do it this company. Way. Let's it. do it this way. What do you mean one wait, company? Wait, wait. Do a Google on your phone, Tommy. Let's do it this way, Johnny. Somebody says to you, "I am absolutely petrified and I'm worried about the implications of this vaccine mm -hmm. on my health." 
what's your one line response to them? I've got a follow up. Um, you don't want COVID. I don't want COVID, but I'm very, very afraid. I'm a very precautious person. Don't want to inject something into me when I think I can find other ways of surviving and not catching COVID. I don't want to take the vaccine. What do you say in response? Good luck. The argument in response is I've utilitarianism. Got a I've got a follow up. It's great is good for greatest number. But if I don't take this vaccine, then I can't do any of the things that I like to do. What do you say? I, I think you should take the vaccine anyway. Yeah, so the, uh, his response is suck it up. But the I, original I response through COVID, you don't want this. Yeah, if you don't, okay, want, if you don't want to get a vaccine, you personal. respect that's your personal But that's view. also a bit BS because discussion. he said the way COVID attract, attacked you won't be the same as the way COVID sure. attacked me or that someone else, right? Sure. So your personal opinion of how you felt during COVID isn't pertinent to how COVID's going to hit me. We've asked you for a personal recommendation. The answer you should have given Rich, right, is... Firstly, you say you do it for yourself. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm under 25. I have mm. a low chance of doing it, chance of getting it. So I don't really see why I should get the jab, yeah. blah, blah, blah. The second line of like retort is this utilitarian argument of you're doing it for yourself, but also for your community. This greater good for the sure. greater number kind of response. Right? Sure. Uh, they, which they can bat away because they, they're an individual and they have individual rights. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right. But it's that final thing of, all right, well, then I basically can't leave the house if I don't have a jab. That's basically the the kind of worst case scenario that we're kind of inching towards. Yes, but you need to work on why people are skeptical to take it, right? You need to work on why why is people are skeptical, how they've been allowed to become skeptical through sure. abs absorbing but misinformation. Not, but and you need to work not, on and you need to work on bro, unwinding that. But behavior, can you not right? see the difference between those two things, right? So there's a difference between convincing someone of through marketing, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, yep. of why their beliefs are wrong. Yeah. Right. And there's uh a, a different thing which is what we're arguing which is essentially coercing people to take jabs by taking away things they want to do can you not see how those two things are the same i can tell my kid listen do your homework because you want to get good grades and then you want to get a good job mm -hmm. and you want to go to university blah 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 or i can tell my kid listen do your homework or you're not going to watch tv or play ball or i'm not going to let you play football that those two things he's going to do his homework but one i've coerced him into doing it by taking away shit he likes he wants to watch tv my bad bro no tv to your things done or you explain to him my guy this homework is important because xyz and tomorrow and school will be easier and this and mm -hmm. that blah 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 right can you not see how those two things aren't the same it's just it's a woefully false equivalence. <laughs> the relationship between a parent and their child is not the same as that between a free citizen and a yeah, state. Yeah, no, no. But I, I think, you not I taking th the full the argument. For I you to take example, that from it, it shows me that you weren't listening. So we might. As well but I was listening. It was. It was, it was more. It was more about forcing versus coercion. I think that was the point of Tommy's. Tommy's example. Yeah, and I understand it. And I understand you the difference. I understand the difference. I just don't. I just don't buy that. If if there is a rumor that you might need a passport, maybe a rumor that you might maybe need a passport to go to a club that you that your that your civil liberties or your rights are being infringed to a significant extent that you can feel victimized and persecuted about it i think there's some I think selective it's a bullshit argument here because you've seen how the government does policy right through leaks you yeah. soften up yeah. the thing through leaks yeah. so i don't know, I understand how you're you're sat here with this attitude about it like not understanding that leaks is how you soften up the gut yeah so I get then that. what are you talking about then when you're saying no one said anything no one's da, 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 as if you're talking as if we're the deepest conspiracy every theories because every time there's we're a not. leak there's it's a counter leak that comes that says they're not going to do it but and there's enough there's enough counter briefing that says it's not going to happen regardless right. well, though, I, there I is enough, thought... brief, enough briefing to make this not a fringe conversation didn't actually think that this would be uh in question um, as to whether or not this was coercive. As I said at the start of this, Dominic Raab himself said that, you know, this is exactly what the tactic is. This is yeah, exactly what the tactic is. That's why it's interesting. Your opinion is so um, interesting. He's, he's as senior as it gets in the government. But it is what it is. Like, I mean, I still am on the side of make a decision and do not be forced. Get the vaccine for the right reasons. But get the however, vaccine. Yeah, however okay. long. Well, look, I'm not going to go that far. Like, I'll people, go that far. I'm get not, the vaccine. Do your thing. Yeah, do your thing. I'm not going to say it. I've got the vaccine and my two co-hosts have got the vaccine. Okay? Do your thing. Research it. Make your decision. Embrace each other no matter what the decision is. Not too much because they might have COVID in it. But get it. <laughs> get it. Yeah. Like, what, it makes what, sense. I was, what I say is, I, and I agree, I agree. I agree with you to the extent that it's not our position it's not our prerogative to be pro or anti-vax for anyone else but what i will say which is highly personal is that you don't want covid 
Long you don't want this. John COVID. You don't want this. Um, and look, at the end of the day, in my view, this is this is more government fuckery, depending on what your views are on how this is being handled. And there's been a lot of government fuckery. We really wanted to touch upon today a few things. The whistleblowing thing that we mentioned earlier on about how journalists are going to be hotted up like never before mm -hmm. for for any exposés that the government feel leave them in a sticky situation um, as they revise uh, this, uh, what's the name of the the, the act? Is there some, some secrets act or something or the other? We'll touch upon that as that develops. Uh, we were also going to talk about the increased stop and search and the government's crime plans. Boris made a horrible comment about chain gangs this week, mm. um, which we're going to, which we're going to talk about um, at some point soon. Um, and then of course, everything that's been happening, not on this government, but um, with regards to, project pegasus um we're going to touch upon all of these things coming on a future episode we're just waiting for some of these stories to gather up a little bit more information so we can really cut them up properly mm -hmm. for your entertainment purposes mm -hmm. i think with all of that i do and you know what we're going to do this first because for fuck's sake we never get to have a music session we have to dedicate the next two to three minutes okay mm. on a guy called dave David, yeah? Mm -hmm. Man like Santan. We're all alone in this together. Mm -hmm. His new album, which came out this week, it is phenomenal. Dave is 23 years old, is now on album three, I believe. It's either is it? I think it's, it's, two, it's no? album two or project think, three, think, but yeah, two albums. Album two. He had a, I think he had like a mixtape or, or an EP before. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, my views of Dave as an artist are not fully aligned with my views of Dave as an album maker in mm, that I never typically loved listening to his album beyond the first listen. Um, you didn't enjoy psychodrama? I enjoyed psychodrama once, okay, but I didn't really go back to it. Obviously it had Got some you. bangers on it, but I never really, really returned to it. There was something about the density of his music, which I didn't think made it so accessible just on the fly. Do you know what I mean? Like so it's I couldn't too just, dense, couldn't just but yeah, I couldn't just bump it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it wasn't a casual listen. You really had to get into it. And there are some elements of that on this album because it's very deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about everything from him going into care or potentially going into care from, from birth the uh, domestic abuse of his mother, his mother's struggles coming over from Benin in Nigeria, Benin City in Nigeria, the Windrush generation. It's obviously got all of the things that we like about Dave. Cheeky, heavily lyrical, heavily super lyrical. smart, mm -hmm. super talented, super musical, but it's hard hitting, but it's way more refined this time. So it sounds like an album of an artist who has actually fucking arrived and it's beautiful. It's got collaborations with Snow, Snow, Just, oh, is that just, someone we should know? Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, just Google her. Um, collaborations with James Blake. It's got In the Fire, which you've probably all heard, which has gigs, gets, meeks. Who am I missing off that? Uh, that was a big tune. Unbelievable. That, that cypher Stormzy's thing. on that. Obviously, you saw the single Clash. It's beautiful. That's the only album that you need to be listening to for the whole month of August. Um... <laughs> Tommy's just pulled up Snow Allegra on Google and he's giving me the mid sign with his hands. No, I'll, I'm, I will, I'm strongly I disagree. Like I will before. fight you. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, um, have you spelled her name right? Because... Yeah, no, I think... Um, S-N-O-H. She basically yeah. looks like the same person we saw uh, on that video. Uh, on watch your mouth, video. watch your mouth. Who, who anyway. was it? What video were we watching earlier? Skeptar, Skeptar video. featuring video. Jay Balvin um, mm -hmm. called Nirvana. Check that out as well. Mm -hmm. Good video. Um, Dave, we're alone in this together. It is a powerful listen, but the music is 10 out of 10. No skips. No skips. Um, no First time in a long time. Yeah. Genuinely no skip. Yeah, it, it, it's just amazing. And again, it's scary. It's scary how, uh, how young he is and the music that he's making at his level, at his age. He's a treasure, so, man. So check that out. And now, without further ado, mm -hmm. we have relationship advice. Quickly becoming the most popular part of the show. I the, got a good in man. The relationship. Mm, I look forward to this. Have the DMs delivered? This is usually my favorite part of the pod. Yeah, same. Yeah. Looking to shoot bail. Yeah. So Looking forward. To, oh, oh, this is from one of our listeners in Holland. Mm. 
Oh, okay. We got international, baby. Yeah, Hello. Which technically, I shouldn't say anymore. It's the Netherlands, isn't it? Right. It is. Yeah, where yeah, Holland is part of the also, Netherlands. Also, technically, exactly. we're trying to keep this in Yeah, we're trying not to yeah, bait yeah. people out. Yeah. Oh, am I not supposed to say countries? Well, I'm just trying to show it. the reach, the global yeah. reach. Yeah. Certain, you know certain pods are local, certain pods you know aren't. I mean? mm-hmm. um, without further ado, let me just dive in, shall I? Please. I've been seeing who I affectionately call the nerd mm. since February of this year. Why is like my it. message trying to shit for that? <laughs> Things have been going great. Steamy. Humbly love. Sloppy. Oh, no. Haram. Sensual. With the nerd. As All well. of it. What a nerd. A man like. Fast forward six months. She tells me in a convo that she leans towards asexuality. I am surprised to learn this because of everything I just mentioned Wait a minute, before. This, this is a guy's perspective. Female's perspective. Oh, it's guy on girl. Okay. She explains that sometimes she has phases in which she does not feel like having sex or doing anything sexual for months at a time. Okay. Yikes. Okay. For months at a time. Months at a time. Okay. She explains that this has nothing to do with her feelings or the person she dates at the time or her attraction to them. It's her, not them. Yeah. She also explains that she is still very physically affectionate, just not sexually. Okay. I act cool, but I'm freaking out. Being my physically affectionate, sexual Princess Leo self, I worry that my ego won't be able to handle it and that I'll cry because my feelings are going to be so hurt. On the other hand, we've had great and frequent sex so far. She has many amazing qualities I appreciate and it's probably the most mentally and emotionally healthy relationship or situationship I've been in. Mm. Two questions. positive review. Two Mm. questions. Question one. Is this a situation I can learn to navigate and grow to be okay with Mm -hmm. since many other important factors are fulfilling Mm -hmm. or is this too big a gap to bridge? Mm. Question two. Do I end it now before it gets more difficult so funny. or cross that bridge when I get there. Question two kind of answers question one. Mm. <laughs> like, is this bridge too far? Number two, should I just close it off now? Yeah. Basically, should I pull the bridge so, up? So or is, that the end of the, is that the end of the segment then? No. Firstly, <laughs> this fucking guy. no, no, I was just saying it's, uh, it, it, the second question gives us an insight into uh, her mind, uh, her state of mind, basically. Uh, like she mentioned that she's quite freaked out. And I think the fact that that second question is there shows that she is quite freaked out. Yeah. Um, So what do you suggest? So, boy, it's, I mean, uh, this is awful. Uh, When you say it's a sticky one, it turns out that it's absolutely not a sticky one for her partner. Um, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You man, both try not to laugh into the mic, you pagans. (laughs) Sorry. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, 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 look, um, it really comes down to how important sex is in a relationship to you. And are you willing to stomach not having sex for the periods that this person doesn't want to? Is this person worth sticking around for months mm. of no sex? Um as to the specific question you asked, can I get used to this? No one's going to be able to tell you. Exactly. No one's going to be able to tell you, can what you get you used do, to this? What would you do, bruv? Do you know how hard it is to just like see something peng just walking around in like hot pants and not trying to hit? Bruv, give some real advice before I get mad. That's the way, yeah, I mean... <laughs> the fuck? That being what the fuck is he talking about? No, 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 Let's that, get to the fucking I'm, shit. I, th- I feel like I'm closer to Johnny on this. Oh. Because uh, there's obviously no one, no guy for me to shoot bail to in this, in this scenario. <laughs> but like, uh, firstly, like I think... She's saying that this is not a constant thing, right? So it's ups and downs. Sometimes yeah. it's like normal Smiles levels of affection. And then sometimes it's no sexual affection, right? That's how I understood. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So she shifts I, between yeah. asexuality so, and all. So what I, would, what, I would, what I would say is <laughs> you, are, you ask for solutions. Please. Um, so, so do you like this person to stick around during the periods of no sex? Yes or no? Would your partner consider an open relationship? Ooh. And is that something that you would consider? Dynamics. Too. If okay. sex is that important to you, or if you feel like, if you feel like this person is worth sticking around for, but you can't get over not having sex, 
could you and your partner work out some kind of open arrangement that would allow you to like that. to have the heady one uh, whilst <laughs> uh, staying loyal Very to good. this person? Yes. An open relationship. I can't believe we segued to this so well. Oh, come on. An open relationship to get sloppy with someone else's daughter while she doesn't want me is not a substitute option for me. Ooh. Oh, she said that. Yes. Oh, this is so beautiful. She, the way she that could tell, out. she could see oh, which way this conversation she knew, was going. She knew we were basic level oh, man. Yeah, bait. <laughs> oh, bait, bait. She bread. good. Oh shit. So 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 she so she doesn't want. She's trying to go okay, all so in, bro. Fuck. This is, I'm she sorry. wants to be all in. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is this is tough, and I, we appreciate all DMs, yeah. but fundamentally, the submitter's choice that they're presenting is like this person needs to want to fuck me, or. Um, I'm not around for this anymore. So it's not very understanding of the person's asexual nature, right? You get into a relationship with someone, you need to take them as they are and as their whole. You need to decide whether or not you like this person enough to wear their asexuality. And other than that, you're just complaining about who they are, especially if you're not open to an open relationship type solution. But if they've been blowing back out for like the first six months of this thing, mm -hmm. then maybe the asexuality is a lie. Maybe it's a lie. But that's, I mean, that's maybe it's, maybe she's trying to be woke. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she's trying to be hip. So maybe woke, she's trying to be hotel. Not having sex. So yeah. just to get this right, so there'll be like a, a, a three or four month period of asexuality, and then they'll just go back to being normal, and then there'll be another little spell, and then back to normal, and then a spell back yeah. to normal. For okay. argument's sake, yeah. Yeah, I think um, this is a like I don't think I have anything to add on this. This that, <laughs> that different to Johnny's, right? In the sense that like I I feel like this particular. Um, scenario in this particular piece of relationship advice there's not a huge amount of advice to be given it basically comes down to what johnny said how important is sex to you in a yeah, relationship I, I think you guys are getting it fucked up it's not necessary and i know sex has been mentioned in this quite a bit but sex is obviously the end result there's, it's the affection isn't it it's it's everything that comes but she says she's affectionate she she in a non-sexual way sexual but if she goes through periods where that's off she doesn't say that it's not off i believe that's what she no she says she remains affectionate exactly. but not Except in a sexual sex. way exactly so you're still uh, getting your hand held and little kisses yeah. here and there and that kind of and shit. that's fine that's relationship that's but fine she's just not actively looking to fuck for a certain period of time during the year yeah. basically it's giving sahara desert certain months of the season exactly but you're still getting the affection yeah as i understood it yeah yeah, she also explains that she's still very physically affectionate, just not sexually. Exactly. So there you are. Right? So you're still getting the affection. So then this so then this comes down to sex. This is a discussion yeah. about sex. How important is sex to you? Is this person is this person worth not having sex with temporarily to keep around? It's also uh, how important sex is relative to all the other Correct. things that are important in a relationship Correct. because the, the person who submitted the question asked or stated that everything else seems to be fulfilled, right? Yeah. So most other parts of the relationship are bless up, yeah. except this kind of bouts of asexuality, basically. Yeah. So it just comes down to, and I feel like from the nature of the, the message that you read, the person who submitted it isn't looking to deal with this, basically. So it's isn't looking to deep these 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 asexual yeah. moments. Yeah. And is looking for an excuse to dip. Correct. Basically. So I think I think I don't know. I just think I think she's she said herself, I worry that my ego won't be able to handle exactly. it and that I'll cry because my feelings are gonna be so hurt. So she is ultimately potentially worried that the feelings of asexuality are gonna switch off completely. Yeah, but that's also a bit of a bad statement because like she's kind of made it about her, like when she's talking about ego and yeah. la 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 basically your partner the person who you love or whatever well i mean has some issue where she's not looking to peace for a couple of months oh she's sauce issue well when i say issue it's whatever not an issue but has, has has a character has, trait it's not even a character it has a, i don't think issue is a is an unfair word it's an issue in the relationship it's not it's not it's the, an issue it's not that's what i mean has a relation it's not the person has an issue being asexual isn't an issue well she has an issue having sex during certain periods of the month what's wrong with saying that uh, like yeah, she's okay. asexual it's phrasing right no not really because she's a, she's yeah, she fucks, potato, during, potato. Other, we know she fucks six mean, months of the year you didn't mean any she harm. fucks seven eight months of the year so it's a bit of an issue for three months a year or whatever oh person. so now it's an issue well no but that's what it is it's bouts <laughs> oh, of asexuality right so it's about so, whether you're willing to so, deal with that so does the submitter have a point or not so if i was the submitter i'd look at how important sex is relative to everything yeah. else basically would i hang around if for me if, if like 
regular good sex is a, a top two, top three thing, then is a top two, top three thing, then then obviously I can't stick around in a relationship where that doesn't go down. But yeah. if it's not as important to me, then then I'm, I'd happily stick around because everything else yeah. has been fulfilled. I think for me, for me, it comes, yeah, a lot of what Tommy said. I, I think that this person, the ego, this, this, the ego thing's very interesting, right? I feel like my ego won't be able to take my partner not having sex with me. And that, ego is a dirty word misused most of the sure, time. Though. Sure, sure. Get, everyone's but, got an ego. But we right? understand the context in which she's using it, right? You've, I'm not making you, any assumptions, that. by. Um, and, and I think she's entitled to be upset that her partner doesn't want doesn't to want to have sex with her. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's tough. I can only imagine that's tough. Um, but given that it's given that the root cause of her partner not wanting to have sex with her is because of her sexual orientation, it's not something that you can be upset with your partner about. And so if you feel like your partner's oh, sexual I don't orientation... Know if she's upset. Well, I think she is. She I is don't upset. Know she, I, I don't thing, know if she's upset. I, I think if, she's happy. I think she's got a good thing. She's just worried about not getting that anymore. Okay. I, that's, I think, the, that's kind of the point, right? That's but she's not unhappy. But one thing I think that's worth clarifying is that... She just doesn't know if she can deal with that long term. Is it asexuality? That's not unhappiness. That's... She's unhappy with the situation that her partner's asexual. Well, again, this is what this is the clarification that I wanted to make, right? Is is her partner asexual, or is the person who's uh, uh, submitted the question taking bouts of no sex as asexuality? No, I think well, we have she to told assume her that, she's asexual. that she is asexual. She told that's her. her thing. But asexual means that means that you're not on sex. You can't be on it. Eight yes, months a year and not yes, only four can. months That's a year. That's how asexuality works. works. Yes. I thought you were asexual all the time. No. I thought so too. But no. you're just not interested in peace and you might peace every now and again, no. but it's not no. a regularity. No. Again, I'm not comfortable with how definitive you are when you speak. <laughs> Which, like, bro, how do you know anything about this for you to speak so fucking definitively? He's asexual. You have no idea he's about asexual. it. What do you mean, bro? He's do asexual, people, bro. Do people not read shit? Like, <laughs> read a fucking book. Alphabet soup gang. You need to have, at least have the basics on, on most of the letters. This is the privilege that comes with WBS. Being white? Yes. No. <laughs> because you speak with chest and, abso so and absolutely. Don't waste my time like, arguing <laughs> semantics. This is not the first time. This is the whole pod. It's been a surprising thing. That yeah, I've but anyway... Um, this person needs to assess how important sex is in a relationship. You need to understand that it's nothing that your partner can control. Um, you being upset about it is your problem to deal with. Not it's also not a reflection on you. Uh, it's not a reflection on you. It's just the way that your partner is. And if sex is that important, if constant sex is that important, this person can't guarantee it to you. So this love. is not the relationship for you. Tough correct. love, yeah. tough love, tough love. I respect it. I respect it. We joke around too much. That was a nice little bit of tough love on this relationship What's your section. View, Rich? Um, my view is fairly aligned with yours uh, for all of my shit talking, of course. <laughs> People have differing levels of interest in sex. Um, what Johnny said at the start of his speech is that you have to take the person as who they are. The rough and the smooth. Everything when you're taking on somebody. We often try to contort and we often try to change things to our desirable view of what is perfect or what have you. And that's one of the worst things you can do going mm -hmm. into a relationship. People come as they are. Um, or as Jay-Z said, I was who I was when I got here. Um, and if you are on trying to change somebody from who they are, then nine times out of 10, that's going to end as a disappointment. So you have a choice. You accept and trust that even when that person isn't having sex with you, you are the only person they are thinking about having sex with. Or game. you you do have to... You got summer's here. Summer's here, baby. And uh, jump on the boat. Let's go. You know what I mean? White boy summer. Jump on the canal. You can join Johnny's white boy summer if you want. Even though you're not a boy, it's true. Uh, actually, we yeah. need to. Think I mean, of we're a fundamentally all there for the same thing. So yeah. this submitter mm -hmm. is welcome. Exactly, and um, and then maybe look elsewhere. White person summer, we can call it. Yeah, white non-binary humanoid summer. Summer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Someone send Chet Hanks a tweet. Yes. <laughs> but good luck. Good luck in your endeavours. Yeah, good, genuinely good luck. And Let us know you. what you decide to do I as really, well. I actually really enjoyed that one because it was that's some real shit. That's mm. some, just some really real real shit. And I'm like, oh, my parents bought me a house and any of that shit. Good luck, man. Yeah, good, good luck. luck.
listener. Yes. Um, and keep the submissions coming in. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So I guess we are now at our final point of the podcast. Yes. We better be. We better be. We're at two it's hours. It's a long one today. Oh boy. Uh, this is the point in it's which we one. cover. No, no, the the pods are long. Oh, the, uh, the quiz. The quiz is a quick <laughs> one. <laughs> You this can is the fork point it if you want it's of the podcast. Yeah, anyway. just cut the whole quiz if you do relax, that. Relax, relax. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the point of the uh, the pod where we cover news stories that we didn't have a chance to cover yes. in brief. Yes. As always, get your phones ready, gentlemen. There yes. will be five questions. Each question. My is new number. iPhone 12 Ooh. Pro moved up from the Fucking 6s, baby. Finally, welcome to the 21st century. I don't know. So is guys. the calculator better on that one? Uh, yes, <laughs> I think it might yeah, be. It does bid mass on this w- one. Worth the upgrade. Ooh, uh, it's the same. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five questions. Each question, uh, the answer is a number. Uh, sum all the five uh, numbers up, and at the end, we'll take a cumulative total. Play along at home. Play along at home, indeed. Uh, obviously, we've had a, a lot of rain and uh, and a lot of... Weather, that adverse rain was, weather. That rain was crazy, yeah, brother. A lot of adverse weather. Yeah, I can't relate. I was up north. It was beautifully sunny. Yeah, I saw actually your pics mm. look good. But Be- the first five, the Do- five from the five questions. Doing up Tory. Mm, yes. From the five questions, two of them are actually uh, uh, climate change related. Oh, so. fucking hell. Good luck, gentlemen. We'll start now. Johnny Vivas is currently 2 1 up. That's right. That's factual. All right, this is we're gonna start with a nice easy one. This is one We've for had me. Three rounds, so it's gonna be what him or me. Yeah, this week, yeah, and it's me. PBS announced that Arthur, the beloved children's TV show, which shot back to prominence with clenched fist memes, yes, oh, will be coming to an end and next I say, year. Hey, hey, what, what a, a wonderful, wonderful kind of day. Hey, where we can learn to work and play. Hey, and, and sing along with each other. Yes, what a happy kind of day. Hey, so that show is coming to an end now. No, I mean, so they just announced that they'll be cut, cutting it next year. Coming to an end. They cancelled DW. DW. They cancelled X Factor as well. Shout out them, Simon man. Cowell. Yeah. Apparently Simon cancelled that himself. But yes. we'll I get mean, back. To I that. didn't know. It was they, still going. So how many years has Arthur been running for? Ooh. The number of years that Arthur has been running for. Easy. Question number two. A tsunami warning was issued for parts of Alaska after a large earthquake struck the peninsula yesterday. To the nearest whole number, how large was that earthquake on the Richter scale? Mm-hmm. In case you're not familiar, the Richter scale is one to ten. Just you got it, yeah? Mm. yeah. All right, question yep, number yep, three. Yep. So we'll stick to climate change for the third question, yeah? Boring. According to scientists, the UK is already undergoing disruptive climate change with increased rainfall, sunshine, and temperatures. Mm-hmm. The recently published UK State of the Climate Report states that 2020 was the third warmest, uh, third warmest year in the UK since 1884. Mm. Jeez. How many of the top 10 warmest years have occurred since 2002? How many of the top 10 have occurred since 2002? Exactly. So we learned that 2020 was the third warmest since yeah. 1884. So that's definitely one in the top 10. How many others happened post 2002? Mm-hmm. Next question, please, boss. Good, good, good. On to the next one, yeah? I'm still fucking around. I'm on this thing, innit? Question number four. As you may remember... Which... In the hair. Sorry? Nothing. I was talking shit to Rich. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as you may remember, earlier this year, the government faced a backlash after the Department of Health announced that NHS workers will receive a 1% pay rise. Hmm. You may remember that. We've covered it in the pod. Following recommendations from an independent pay review body earlier... Th- uh, uh, from an independent pay review body earlier this week, ministers announced a pay rise of X percent hmm. for NHS workers. Next question. What please. was that percentage? Yeah, Next move question, on, please, move on, please. That move one on. was an easy one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 right. yeah that yeah, one yeah. was an easy one. This one's below not. inflation. They're mocking it. This one's a hard one, and a funny one, and a nice one, and a familiar one, and finally, hmm. this story is about. It's probably about ten days old, but nevertheless. Ziona Channa, the man said to be the head of the world's largest family, has died in northeastern India. Ziona, 
who had an amazing 39 wives. She's so jealous. And 33 grandchildren. Don't know. How many kids did he have? Doesn't sound like a lot of grandkids to wives. So he's had, he, so, so he's the head of apparently the law, was considered to be the largest family in the world. He recently died. 39 wives, 33 grandchildren. Yeah. How many kids? Some of them wives aren't going to be the baby makers, you know what I mean? Like, uh, some of them are just going to be there for the Saturdays. How many kids? Kid dems. Add I'm them all up. To 39. All 39 wives, yeah. Add them all up. Five, five, there's five, uh, five numbers to add together. Yeah, yeah. Abby Addy is always your closest to me. So Bang. let me see your phone. Very good. Uh, Mr. Vivas, please give us your answer. Uh, hold on, I need to do the maths. Why does he need to do the Why is he, he not hasn't using upgraded the on the calculator? So he hasn't long. upgraded it's to the so new iPhone. so long, bruv. Just, he, he's done this four times now. My, my brain is COVID riddled, bruv. Oh, here we can't go. Blame yeah. long, yeah. Is it long, we we can tell by that fucking uh, coercion my, uh, talk. My mate. answer is um, from infinity to 93. <laughs> okay, so your answer is 93. Yeah. And uh, Miss Abiadi? 68. 68. I think this time we're going to do a bit differently. I'm going to give you answers as we go along. Ooh, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. So no, you no, pay no, attention. No, no, no. We're on the clock, buddy. So you pay attention. <laughs> we're on the clock. I'm going to tear through it. Question number one, how long has Arthur been running? It's been running for 25 years. Oh, boom, I got 21. Ooh, not bad. No, I, I got 26, so. Ooh, not Ooh. bad either. This is going to get close. On the Richter scale, yeah, the US Geological Survey said the quake was... 8.2. Correct. Shit, I got seven. That's so. fucking huge, by the way, guys. It's enormous. 8.2. It's enormous. Yeah. Just, just to give you some clarity, nine or above is total destruction. Yeah. With waves moving through the earth, which are visible to the naked eye. <laughs> right? That's nine. This place was 8.2. So it's fucking it's enormous. huge. It's yeah. huge. It's huge. I get it. Question number three, Rich is not interested in saving the planet. It's also Alaska. He gives a shit. Yeah. Well, then here's question three then for the UK, right? How many uh, have uh, of the top 10 happened since 2002? I think I did like six. Seven. All 10. Ooh. All, t- all 10 of the hottest uh, recorded years in history have happened since 2002 for the UK. All right. So uh, 2020, <laughs> listen to these stats, was the third warmest, fifth wettest, and eighth sunniest on record. So basically everything's baffed. <laughs> All right. Question number and four. Earthquakes and that. With the NHS man them, the answer was 3%. Yes, right? it so was. So they were given an, earlier this week, ministers announced a 3% offer following recommendations from an independent pay review body. Uh, obviously, everyone is switching. Um, this um, payable in claps, I would imagine. In claps, yeah. yeah. Um, they've so offered, one of us has got the last question very wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So the NHS, blah blah blah. This is basically something that's on offer for about a million staff. Interesting. Doesn't it include junior doctors. Mm-hmm. Don't really know why. But mm. question number five. Yeah. So how many how many children have you guys got down? Can't remember. But just give me the damn thing. I bro. put fifty four. This G. Yeah. Had ninety four kids. Oh my days. The answer is one hundred and forty. That's three one Johnny Vivas. That's fucking. Right. 104 kids. No, no, no. The answer is 140. He had 94 kids. 94 kids. And how 30, many grandkids? 39 wives, 94 kids, 33 grandkids. So not all that's kids a, are necessarily over 18, that's a right? a bottleneck oh, if I've ever okay. heard of. There could yeah, be a bunch sense. of kids that are still underage, right? There could be 50 kids in there easily or 30 kids in there who are under 18. Cool, bro. Yeah. All okay, right. Well, <laughs> thanks for listening to episode 21. Well done, Johnny. <laughs> Fuck off. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>